What is going on, guys and girls? It's Ghost Robo. Welcome to another exciting podcast. This week's show is the biggest we have ever had. We keep topping ourselves week in and week out. A large cast of five joins me today, starting off with the man from the land of the dangerous Dallas, Volatile Gabe. Hello. How's it going, bud? Perfect. And I realized I stole Scott's hello. That I didn't even mean for that to happen. Oh, you, you, his, his catchphrase yeah. has now been... Yeah, <laughs> I, st- I stole it. That's mine now. Scott, you got like what, like a five dollar usage fee on that? I'm not talking yet. I'm not being introduced. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait to meet whoever that mystery guest is. Um, also joining from last week, now probably a returning host is Max Blitzwinger. Thank you for uh, for bestowing your presence on us once again. You are very welcome. And also a returning guest is Scott Game Riot. Hello. All right. Whoa, that was, that's that was the most it. excitement that was good. ever there, had on there this we podcast. go. I'll, see, all that needed what, to happen was that I needed to steal his hello. And we fixed yeah. that. All right. I fixed gotcha. Scott, guys. All right, so Scott, I want the uh, I want the update on Uncharted 4. How's development going? I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing you work for them. Oh, right. we just I'm, I'm said we, 10 10 already. So we good. just said we weren't going to do this. <laughs> well, I said <laughs> How was lunch with Neil? He he's good. He's doing the uh he's doing the film as well, isn't he? Uh-huh. Is he doing a film? Busy he's, guy, he's, huh? He's a busy guy, but he's given on chai ten out of ten already. So you must have felt really. Oh wow, he became he... a game reviewer too. <laughs> yeah, wow. Man. He's, he's a so game good. reviewer. He's a he's a he goes out to lunch with YouTubers. He's just all over the place, doing mm. everything. And another guy that's all over the place joining us. He, he you've been here before, but not for a long time. Oliver from How the Master of out? Empire. What? How am I all over the place? That's, You're always all over the how's place. How's that an introduction? Well, <laughs> 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 You're, you're, Start a tra- again. you're a busy yeah. traveling man. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes okay, yeah. you know, you're out in the countryside. Sometimes you're in town. Sometimes you're in America. Sometimes you're off with your fiance. Sometimes you're off with with us. But most of the time, Very he's true. in traffic. <laughs> yeah, most of the time, it's traffic getting late for a podcast. But uh, we're safe. All right. So, so the the weekly question for you is: What is the color status of your car? It's currently still green. Okay. Uh, it's going to go be wrapped again because I, uh, I I got a couple of chips on it. So the, the front needs to be wrapped and I actually scratched the side. So that needs to be rewrapped. I got new wheels the other day, which are black. So it's looking dapper. Are you getting it rewrapped in green? Or are we going like gold or sparkly pink? Or? It's, it's going to stay green. This car is definitely going to stay the green machine. Um, okay. And then the next car is going to be like a chrome or a chrome gold or something fancy. And then after that, can you, can we sell like shout out spots on your car? Like, can I throw my ghost? Yeah, logo? yeah, um, yeah I, I can sell advertising on it. Definitely. Yeah, there we go. Pound. Like yeah, passenger be, door costs this much. You yeah, want the, the bumper car. It costs this much. How much yeah. is your Just insurance? A, is it like through the roof because of the color? No, they actually when I call to change my color, they it, they cost nothing extra, which I was really oh, confused that's about. That's interesting because hmm. here yeah. here there's a big difference. If you've got a red car, it's like an extra two hundred dollars a month. Wait, Are you kidding? Is yeah. that real? Because like, red's dangerous. No yeah, yeah, no, no. Because they've done studies that show that like people who have red cars drive faster. Oh my oh. god! But mine's like bright green. You, I think I'm the only guy that has a bright green car. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, let's make a study right now. Uh, uh, do you usually okay. drive faster or slower than the average person? Faster. Um, I'm yeah, possibly a little bit faster. Okay. Does anybody uh, here have a, a red bit. car? Nope, I got black. I got black. That, what does I that stand black, for? Yeah. yeah, but Scott, can can your car go like on the motorways? Oh jeez, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been a hundred in that thing can, before. Can your horse pull like the carriage shit. fast enough? <laughs> uh, I Shots loved my fired. Fiesta when I had it. The Fiestas oh, are banging God. cars. We have a brilliant show full of game discussion as well. Um, we're going to talk about the future <laughs> of games and sort of the VR. Gosh. Uh, just onslaught with Microsoft's HoloLens. It's been a slow week for releases and news, so we will get to what we've been playing um, in the second half of the show, but starting off with kind of some topical discussion. First, though, sad news from, from the Ghost HQ. Pretty much every computer um, in my household has busted in, in one way or another. Um, so I don't know if we want to take a moment of silence or if you each want to offer your condolences one by one. or how yeah, we should... I'll say it for I'm sorry I threw an EMP at your house. I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> it's been absolutely ridiculous. So what what started this cataclysmic I bet you it's of... Neil. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, bashed Uncharted when you're done. I'm taking you out. Oh, goodness gracious. But What uh, sites have you been on recently, Zach? Yeah. Not joystick. I'm joking. <laughs> Funny enough, Ooh. I don't even use the internet on these PCs. I just record off of them and download stuff off Steam. But I plugged in 
Um, I was having problems with the Elgato and PS4. There was some update over the holidays that kind of messed that up, and so I unplugged the USB from my PC, replugged it back in, instant blue screen, and now the PC is completely corrupted, can't Ooh, even get it to boot. That's um, bad. Which I don't... It makes no sense that it would be from the game capture itself, but at the same time, I can't think of anything else, and I had no issues with this computer. It's not like the power supply is shot. It's just corrupt and crazy. Um, they assure me that it's nothing to do with their their device. Um, but even weirder, my laptop, it's an Asus, Asus, I guess I've been schooled on how to say that properly. Sponsored by Asus. Um, yeah. <laughs> their, uh, their laptop that they graciously let me keep. As of as of so far, um, the USB ports they power, but they don't work. So like I can get my mouse to light up its pretty color, but I can't get it to actually recognize. I can get uh, you know the light on my Xbox One controller to um, light up, but no no recognition that there's even a controller plugged in. So I have no idea what's going on there. But it has I've spent more time troubleshooting in the last 24 hours than in the last two years, which is insane. That's not hmm. good, is it? So what? It doesn't send data. It just like sends power. Yeah, which it recognizes flash drives, but no, no mouse. Um, you gotta no, get your drivers reinstalled. That's what I told I've, them. So I've re I've redone every driver I could. I even wiped the entire system and reinstalled Windows, and it's still doing the same thing. So have I'm you turned it off and on again? Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I've yeah, yeah, never think side. of that one. <laughs> the only thing <laughs> I haven't done is um, unscrewed and taken out the battery and let that sit for a while. Someone recommended that, um, but other than that, that's been and, and you said that you. You reinstalled the USB drivers, right? I've reinstalled everything, and again, I wiped the entire system. I deleted, you know, I reinstalled Windows, and you'd think that that would just sort of re, I reset it to factory settings, and, and no, mm. no luck. So I, uh, well, I'm it might be there. that your USB ports are dead. Yeah, they just died after like a month of usage, which would suck. I don't Get know. a Mac. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. This is why I love Mac. Plug and play, nice and easy. Ooh. Well, you're you not, can't play anything. Yeah, mode. you can't do much playing, yeah. but you can yeah, you plug. Can't play. So, yeah. <laughs> you can look at it in a mirror. You can plug a lot. Yeah, and you P- can uh, plug and watch. We'll do that. Yeah. Pl- plug and edit. Plug and. <laughs> Is that going to be their next uh, lo- like uh, motto? <laughs> Mac plug a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. That has a bit of a ring to it. Or, Sounds like or, you're talking about something else. But... Oh, goodness oh, gracious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We better move into the game discussion. Yep. Um, before we do that, you guys, weeks go good. Anything of interest? Any other animals show up at your door game? No, but this one left. It, it ran away. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it, 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 it ran away because um, there's a gate like in the backyard. It's a decent-sized backyard. right? And there's a wooden gate. And I thought that I had done a pretty good job in covering, like, any holes that were there from, like, past dogs that we've had and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I forgot one, and I forgot that hole was there, and I, and I just missed it. So, the dog ran away for a day. The, um, the next day, it came right back, so. Um, it was, oh, it, so it's back now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did he bring your present? Oh, um, <laughs> more poop. Um, oh. No, but, yeah, the hole's covered. She's not going anywhere now. She's trapped forever. <laughs> She's trapped. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Blitz, has your dog left, or is, is he no, just... No, my dog type? is very happy. <laughs> Doesn't sound like uh, Gabe's uh, dog stays by choice, but... <laughs> well, she's happy. She did come back. She's new, okay, so... She's... Before you know it, you're going to be, like, gating all the windows, all the, every door. Like it's going to be, like, a, She's new. Out. Like, she, like, he's got, like, a squad of dogs and cats that he just <laughs> keeps inside. He's like, they know they can't get away. Gosh. Well, and, and Scott, just checking in on your... Is, is the workout program began for Lulu? She's just sitting there doing nothing. Oh, <laughs> you gotta find some like motivational music or like some hypnosis or something. Get like some that. Get some clothes. Oliver, do you have what? What pets do you have? I have two dogs. Are they big, small, fat, uh, they're running pretty, away? They're, they're two small bitches. They are both Jack Russells. <laughs> Uh, that's not funny. That's a technical term. I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Very Laugh technical. Laughing that, Scott. Yeah. No. Um, but no, they're, they're both lovely. And uh, they're, good, they're good girls. Good girls. Sounds good. What isn't good, though, um, is that supposedly Joystick is closing. Uh, the rumor on their very own site this morning, which I thought was all sorts of I- ironic, um, that they're reporting that their own site may be closing. Um, I think AOL um, was where that news sort of leaked that, hey, they may be shuttering some of their... Um, sites, including Joystick. Gabe, I know you mentioned some other layoffs as well this morning. What were those about? It was the Escapist and Game Traders. Those, those were the other two big ones, but uh, GameFront.com, um, they're also having layoffs. But, I mean, it sucks. Like, the Escapist and Game Traders, 
in particular, including them with joystick. They've been around for so long, and it sucks that stuff like this has to happen. But you know. is it weird to you that joystick would be like that? Kotaku has such a hold on that market over joystick. <clears throat> I mean, it's not weird. You know, one of them makes better content. Like, I mean, obviously, there's great people at Joystick, and it, it sucks when anyone loses his job. But I haven't visited Joystick in years, so. Really? So no, I haven't been on there, like, ever. I have. I, I didn't know, even know what it is. I thought you were talking about some sort of, um, <laughs> like, Joe, when you make equipment for, like, PC uh, games. Like... Oh, no, see. Oh, right. That's a, yeah. It's a sad, uh, sad state of affairs when we talk about Joystick, and these guys don't even know what it is. <laughs> I personally think Joystick is a little bit... I mean, K- Kotaku is pretty clickbaity. They've got a lot of food and they they leak a lot of stuff, don't they? And... Yeah. So what is it? Just news? It's, no, no, it's no, no. no. They, they do reviews. They just basically yeah. your typical kind of you know gaming. Well, website. like a IGN. Yeah. 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 They're okay. more like I a like blog, like a blog. A blog yeah, yeah, focused. but they're, yeah, they're not driven as much by video and personalities. Like yeah, the writers right. are not as highlighted as IGNs are. Well, I think yeah. you have to do that now these days, though. It has to be personality Absolutely. driven. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's, why, yeah, that's, why, that's why those guys from IGN left, right? And started their own, like, kind of funny. Yeah. 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 So, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know if that was a good move. Um, and now we're going to announce our Patreon. It's called Really Funny. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, funny. print media in general, whether it's physically printed or digitally printed, just the onslaught of video that YouTube and, and even that places like Giant Bomb have really brought, you know, into the forefront it seems to just be killing any sense of the, these websites that focus on reading and people don't like to read people like to just watch a video and see people be funny and and more than that associate with who you're you're listening to you can see their face their mannerisms um, and get more of a sense of who they are even if it's just audio hearing their voice allows you to kind of feel more friendly with that person than just reading what they've written um do you see like ign kotaku eventually shuttering as well uh, GameSpot is a, is the other like big one, and they're down mm-hmm. like maybe like four or five reviewers. Like they they've wow. like they're having certain problems too. IGN is never going anywhere. They're they're the biggest. They're here to stay in some mm-hmm. fashion, even if if they dwindle their editorial. But they're going to be making videos. They upload like a hundred videos a day. I mean, I'm probably exaggerating. Yeah. With I, I still look IGN at IGN. Great. Though, like, I, IGN. I still I go to their channel, like the YouTube channel, and they're doing like a proper like form production shows and they're getting like 20,000 views and I'm like how's this working yeah. for them how's who's paying for that I know they've done like a a channel called start yeah well which yeah, YouTube yeah but that funded. was YouTube sponsored yeah yeah but then they stopped it after a year as soon as YouTube stopped funding it they went nope okay yeah. fine with yeah but I mean that. look the thing is they also reuse a lot of sets like they'll have one set and then they'll just like you know change a couple of things on it and I, I mean they have the funding uh, they still get tons and tons of hits every day and i think that what they do right is that they do showcase like you know their personalities the people that are behind this content are front and center so mm-hmm. for that i think, I think I, they're, they're, that's a smart move for them i definitely think ign will stick around and maybe even one or two of the more specialized like giant bomb who yeah if you're a gamer might stick around i think their their mm-hmm. personal personality just kind of is so it's so cemented in people's minds that, that I don't think that'll go away. But it is <coughs> weird to, to see how the average person probably would rather go watch PewDiePie scream and yell over some gameplay of a new game or go to NeoGAF and read impressions from fellow fans um, than sit there and watch a, quote, professional um, review or read a professional feature, that kind of thing. Um, I wonder what Polygon's numbers are because they tried to sort of assemble this all-star cast of, of writers um, and bring a... I don't want to say a higher brow, but a more... Their features are pretty well put together. Um, they use a lot of pretty graphics and, and nice visuals. And I don't know how successful they've been, um, but it doesn't seem like it's it's blown, you know, it's gone through the roof or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, who, yeah. I'm, I'm super curious what their numbers would be, too. Mm-hmm. See, I never go on sites like that. I like <clears throat> no. It's not something that I would go watch. I, if I was ever to watch or read something, it has to be, like, short and quick. So as the attention span just shrinks and dwindles, pretty soon we we'll all become yeah. viners. And I mean, I look at just scores now, honestly. I don't really have yeah. the time to sit there and read a whole review. I will watch a video or I will just see the scores quickly. Yeah, honestly. but then you see also a lot of websites uh, taking away scores, right? A lot of websites right. are becoming like, oh, we don't believe in scores and blah, blah, which blah. Are, which which, which, which makes, so, so makes sense. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. for me, that wants to quickly just see how good a game is. It just doesn't work. Now, if I was running a website like this, I think one of the complaints that 
people have about scores is that, oh, it creates all this controversy and places the focus on the number instead of on the, you know, the print before it. But at the same time, like, doesn't that controversy, don't those comments just greatly enhance your website? Like, it gives you more clicks, it gives you more views, it gives you more controversy. Uh, to me, I, I think removing those numbers would almost... Like, I like going to IGN just to see, oh, Uncharted 4 got, you know, a 6.8, or, you know... <laughs> and why that game? <laughs> any game? I, hypothetically, any game. It, it could have been. Yeah, okay. could have been anything. Um, but they, they get oh, a yeah, number, and, like, that's... Rather than, like, Oliver, you're saying, you don't have time to go and sit and read six different reviews. So if I can scroll through and see Joystick gave it a 4 out of 5, IGN gave it a 8.8, .8, you know, Giant mm -hmm. Bomb gave it a 5 star. To me, that's easier for my mind to sort of figure out, okay, what's the general opinion on this game. I mean, you sure you can go to Metacritic, but without those numbers, I don't know. I, I guess as writers, they probably want to bring the focus to the written word, but as a website, I wonder how much that serves or, or does a disservice to their audience. I, yeah, I think what they're doing is a tough one, though, because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's someone's opinion. And, like, half the time, whenever you went and played a game, you thought, oh, this was amazing. You find out the reviews were absolutely shocking. Right. And I think that's kind of when I was like, I don't, I'm not even going to bother reading them because you make your, obviously your own reviews, except you don't have a professional tag above it. Sure, mm -hmm. that's a great point. I mean, do you guys feel like with so much, we're constantly inundated with with YouTubers and with you know the Kotaku's, the Joysticks, the IGNs, and uh, even even friends and family. Like, do you think that your opinion on a game is like almost preset or reset based on what you read, see, hear, watch? I, I I can say my opinion is my opinion, and me reading that Uncharted is amazing doesn't automatically make me feel like it's amazing. Like, I think I try to not let um, scores in general just dictate what I feel about a game. Because if I were to sit there and check the Metacritic for Get Out of Hell, I brought it back. Um, if I were to, <laughs> if, if, if I were to sit there and try to look at review scores for Get Out of Hell, like. It, maybe it has like a high six, but I had a blast with that game. Sure. Yeah. So that that's where I sit with that. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think it does it for the, movies. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that the other element is like that's important is like that's exactly why I think it's important to emphasize personality because mm -hmm. if I can find a writer or a viewer that's very similar to me, like the way that I think of certain games, you know, and that's going to be the person that I go to see their score. And then, yes, it will have influence because I will look at it and I'll be like, well, traditionally speaking, this person has looked at games at the same way that I have. So what did he or she think of it? You know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, li I like going to like going to actual, actual gameplay and just watching like someone play or just raw gameplay and just seeing how the game actually looks um, and whether it looks fun. I just try and base it off my own opinion. Yeah, those sense. articles with like graphics comparisons are so irritating. Every single game is compared, and yeah. there's like no. That's difference. what Digital Foundry does. That's that's exactly mm -hmm. it. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> do you think there's something to be said though for like, just th think of a game like Dark Souls? Okay, like the, the public sort of hive mind on that game grows so massive when it launches and people are talking about oh have you found this have you done this or even like Bioshock Infinite like oh my god you got to see the ending and, and you don't feel like any of that sort of mass mentality does inch you more towards liking or disliking a game imagine if a game comes out and everyone's like oh this is completely horrible the ending's so offensive then you know you kind of want to get to the ending to see is it going to fulfill you know, what people have said about it, or, um, you know, when MMOs come out, the, the desire to get back into World of Warcraft for the new expansion, or the desire to try out H1Z1 because everybody is getting in on it, sort of like that public hive mind sort of guiding our opinions on games. Like Scott was saying, he wants something quick, right? So what I think mm -hmm. a lot of people do, and what I've been doing more, is follow the reviewers on Twitter, and mm -hmm. if you don't want to read their whole review, like, they tweet out what they think about these games all the time. Like the past, which is a bit odd, really. Yeah, Think but <laughs> the past few days, like everybody tweeting about how much they love Dying Light. I mean, I've been playing Dying Light for for a while, like not a while, but you know, I played it a few days before it was out. So, what they're saying when embargoes up doesn't matter to me because I already played. But if, if you want something that's quick and, and you don't want to sit there and read two pages of it, I think Twitter's a good place for that. Mm. Sounds good. Agreed, agreed, <laughs> agreed. Um, Just silence. I'm not going to lie, I'm we... watching that Bioshock ending now to see what happens. <laughs> <with this. laughs> no, but, I'm so confused. But but really, like, the, the, the mentality, again, I just think if you go on NeoGAF, at least for me, 
Uh, I'll speak just for myself then. For me, when I go on NeoGAF and I see, like, a bunch of hype um, over a new indie game, like, that makes me so much more eager to check it out. And then it's kind of reinforced by the fact that people have pointed out the specific parts that are very, very great. So if I and, – and it kind of just falls in line with personality as well. If I hear one of my favorite reviewers say, oh, my God, I love this part in the Talos Principle where it, it makes it feel like the fourth wall is being broken and God is speaking directly to you, and then I play that part, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was that moment, and he thought it was really cool. And I feel like subconsciously somehow that informs our own opinions to at least a, a smidge uh, – yeah. Degree. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think look, the fact is we're in the sharing age, right? Like everything mm-hmm. we do has got to be shared. So mm-hmm. even if you're like Scott and he says, "Oh, I just want like a short sliver," he still goes to certain people to see right. them do that. Mm-hmm. So it's like it doesn't matter no matter what, like your friends or just the overall the general opinion or whatever is going to have influence on how you think of a game, you know? Because you're not going to nowadays there is no such thing as like, you know, where you read about it in a magazine and you only see like a certain view of a game now there's just so much so it's like you're constantly going to be in like exposed to different opinions about it so right. going into it you're going to already have kind of a pre-formulated idea of what is the experience going to be for sure and make sure to let us know in the comments below where you guys go for your video game opinions is it mostly youtube do you still frequent a favorite site twitter where are you guys at with that and how do you think it'll go in the future um, before we get to our future discussion, uh, the quick Nintendo Minute of the day um, is that there was a lot more footage revealed for this Pokken tournament, basically Pokemon Fighters game, um, and we had touched on it the past couple of episodes, just talking about that that could be sort of a super cool um, Looks Wii, so good. Wii U exclusive. Uh, that was my question. If you guys have seen it, what is your take on this game? Because it's not the one-on-one strict, like, arena, f- I mean, just like one-on-one... Tekken type fighter, Soul Calibur type fighter that I thought it was. It's more in the Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, run around this open field, then engage and, and break apart. Oh, is that the thing they showed at the end of the X and Y trailers? Yes. Like they teased, like literally yes. two characters stood there. Oh, okay. Right. And they, they recently, um, this week, revealed Gardevoir, Suicune, Pikachu. So they, so they actually announced other, this for yeah, the arcade, yeah. or they announced it yeah, for. They, yeah, and it, it was being played at this event in Japan um, on the arcade o- over system. a stream. Yeah, it's, the, it's oh, okay. It's I'm kind of surprised by the choices, right? Like I thought it was going to be primarily like fighting type Pokemon, right. but it's interesting some of the announce, like some of the Pokemon they chose. It's like it's going to be interesting to see how it plays in terms of like if that stuff actually makes sense. You know what I mean? Because if you've got like fighting like characters, at sure. least it could be like a traditional kind of fighting game. But here you're going to have to kind of work around. Like the limitations of having like a, you know, four-legged character or something like that. And that's where it just I got sounds worried. like tournament. Well, that's where I got worried because it, you know, if you, if you like what you're saying, if you had Lucario versus Machamp versus you know Hitmonchan like that, then you could develop move sets that were all sort of standard with their own tweaks and variations. But now I'm wondering, and, and it seemed like a little bit of the impression was that this is more of a button mashy. Um, you know, Japanese anime style fighting game where it's like they all have these super different crazy powers and you run around super fast and then enter battle and mash your buttons and use your powers, which kind of, I don't know, that seems to deflate a lot of the hype for me. Doesn't it make more sense within the Pokemon universe though to have that more of like an open arena? Yeah, rather than just a select that move. Well, it it totally does. I just think for them already having Smash Brothers, a dedicated one-on-one fighter would have been a much more successful game idea. Yeah. I mean, that... That that is just Pokemon Stadium. Do you guys think, yeah, it would have been better to just make a sequel to Stadium? Yeah. I mean, the difference here is that you have direct control, though. So it's not selecting moves, it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, You know what I mean? You're still playing the... Like, here you're actually controlling the Pokemon. Right. Which is... A kind of a first. Zach, so that original trailer that you showed me where they're like, it showed right. it like on a 2D space, that's not it, right? I mean, it is it, but you start off like far apart and then you get into sort of, it's like a fighting mode or arena mode, I'm not sure what it's called. Yeah, it's just a little circle. It locks them into a circle and then they battle, okay. but similar to like Dragon Ball Z games of the past. So it's, three, can, so like, it's 3D, like it moves around in a 3D plane. Yeah, and you can break apart and like uh, they, move I mean, around and all the all, all the excitement I had for it's pretty much gone then because I thought yeah. I thought it was like two D like traditional moveset type. Right. Uh, whatever. Then I'm watching it now. It actually looks pretty impressive. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it, it looks promising. I, I, the problem is, again, I think it's going to be tricky to get the balance right. Because, mm -hmm. like we said, like, for example, they're going to have Lapras, I think, in it. Like, how, what are you going to do for Lapras? <laughs> you know? Lapras is a, um, uh, what do you call it, like a support character. So similar to, like, Marvel vs. Capcom, um, they announced Fennekin, Lapras. Snivy, uh, I think, right? Yeah, and, and one more who you can, like, call on as assist characters, which, again... That's super cool, but why not just make it then a... It seems like there's just so many elements. Run around, battle, call on assist characters. Is why it not more just have spectacle? like three Pokemon and then you can switch them out? But that, yeah. that makes more sense. That would, be, that would be really fun just need just an, a strict fighter. Yeah. One of those Wii U mm. games, though, that's like like the 3DS version. Why? I don't see why they haven't done that. Like, like the, the Pokemon. 3DS version of... You mean like 3D? Like, like a Pokemon. Wii U version of Pokemon? Yeah, like, you know, you're, instead it's of you gonna, seeing... I don't know. Like, I know that, the, yeah, there's a lot of people have been clamoring for that for a while now, since the GameCube time, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a, you know, more high resolution. Kind of like what they did with, uh, what was it called? Coliseum Shadow something? What was it called? What was the name? The Remember? Shadow XD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So XD. something yeah. in that vein, I guess, people have been wanting to see more. But I don't know. I just think that they've kind of, like, said that, they want to keep Pokemon exclusive to the 3DS because that's a big system seller. Yeah. So, but the Wii U struggling, so yeah, they that could sell. Yeah. Like, I'd buy another Wii U for that. But I think from Nintendo's <laughs> standpoint, like Max is saying, like, why jeopardize your killer piece of hardware? Just to Pokemon just... is always going to sell, apparently. No, but the problem it's is okay. Same okay, but what if we? Time, what if they do know? this? They release the Wii U version, and people are like, "Wait, this is like way better experience." Right? Yeah. And then nobody well, wants great. to buy. Of... Yeah, but then nobody buys the 3DS. Yeah, but if you anymore. you can't take it on the go, can you? So like, yeah, exactly. Like if I want to be in bed playing, I guess I could on a Wii yeah, U. But, but if, what would you if I was in the car, to have a superior <laughs> experience or just. Oh, you, because you it's could on try the and go. link the games together or something, or you could. I don't know. I, I think yeah, carry this, your progress over. I, I, I yeah. think it's a smart idea to do a fighting game. I think it's good for them to try to do something different with this. Um, I think that look, they they've proven with Smash they know how to make fighting games. So I, I'm just wondering why they chose this particular style. Yeah. So that's kind well, of it, interesting. Well, it is Bandai Namco. Um, yeah. Well, they did. They helped on Smash as well, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. So I, I find Weird. it interesting as to why they chose this. But then again, you know. Um, considering it's Nintendo, like I said last week, at this point, like, as long as you like Nintendo styled games, I, I don't really see them making a bad game. You know what yeah. I mean? So give it a chance. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think it's, it, it's got potential. Uh, I just think, um, another idea for them that would have made sense personally is that people have been asking for an Amiibo style thing for Pokemon, mm -hmm. release this thing for free, have four characters, and then the rest release them as toys and you're going to make a ton of cash. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe that still is in the works. If it is a less balanced, less serious fighting game, and you're just bringing in four-legged characters and you know psychic floating Pokemon and whatever, then perhaps they can do something similar to that because it's not about, hey, we have to have this locked-on moveset. It's more like each Pokemon has three distinct attacks. You put them in the game, and they, they go to work. Still be balanced, though, isn't it? You can't just say, oh, yeah, just chuck a load of characters onto the screen. It's still going to be balanced. Well, balanced balance in the sense that, oh, one guy doesn't do a million damage versus another, but it doesn't have to be as... Is it, it's a bit more complicated. A little bit more complicated than that, but like the certain move sets that the, the, yeah, the yeah, Pokemon yeah, yeah. has has to be equaled out. Yeah, I I think though, like we've have seen, what was the name of that uh, little game with the uh, just kicking and punching, or what was it called? Pokemon D Rumble? Dive Kick. Dive Kick, right? So oh. we've seen that like you can do simple fighting games and people yeah. will enjoy them. So yeah. Dive knows? Kick is awesome. Yeah. Right, what is that? Fighters. I've never played it. It's it's on PC. Um, you basically can dive and you can kick. That's it. You have two buttons. It's a pretty. Uh, oh, they should call that like dive kick or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool. <laughs> Last little note on uh, Pocket Tournament is that they showed the controller and it's an actual gamepad for the arcade, which is super weird, like hmm. a wired gamepad as opposed to like a stick and buttons, um, which I just thought was kind of strange as well. Speaking of the strange and futuristic VR. And where games are going. Microsoft unveiled their HoloLens um, at their Windows 10 conference last week. And obviously we've got Oculus. We've got Project Morpheus from Sony. Um, we've got Nintendo, whatever they may do with 3D and, and quality of life and whatnot. I guess just in general, like VR, what's your stance on this? I've talked about it a little bit before. Um, but just, you know, from, from Wii motion control to connect motion without a peripheral to VR, wearing a giant headset. Like, where do you guys stand? Do you think this is the future of where games are going um, or more a blip on the radar similar to, like, 3D movies and whatnot? 
Yeah, I think it's more like it's it's always just gonna be a novelty. I think I don't think it's ever gonna be the de facto way that we always play games. Or just for now, like mm. I think I think always I think people or maybe when we're all dead <laughs> and, and, and how, all, how quick all, are we planning on dying, all our guys? kids? <laughs> Few years. <laughs> Give it a week. Um, Hundred years. Like, can you guys ima- can you guys imagine a future where? Instead of a controller in hand, it's someone wearing yep. like a face helmet of some kind, and that's it's how not you play a future. Games, really? it's all, it already happens. It's if you now. go to a convention, it. it's there's tons of people lining up to do exactly that. That make me really sick, though. Yeah, no, there's tons of people lining up to try it for 15 minutes. Doesn't mean that's how they want to do it. Yeah, but play. I think that that's gonna be like, I don't know about de facto like for gaming specifically, but I just think that over time that's gonna become. A, like a normal element of our lives it's going to be super applicable to education and do, like practicing trades and stuff like that and i i think that yeah. at the end of the day once somebody makes a really really crazy well polished experience like that like you know like a naughty dog or somebody comes along and makes it like where you can't go backwards at that point you know so all right um, sure, it, it makes sense for other things, but gaming specifically, right? Or or just entertainment. A uh, 3D was something that people lined up for, you know, when it they was first do. being shown. At, 3DS at tr- is still going strong. Yeah, okay, but <laughs> no one uses I know, 3D on now, that, though, do they? Mm, they always turn I don't know. Yeah. The new yeah. one has 3D no, stability, so no. I don't think no, that's going to make people won't. like actually play it. Uh, plus, TVs like at at one point, 3D TVs were all the rage. All the new release TVs had it. Now they're going backwards. They're like, okay, we you know we tried that, but new TVs these days, it's not about 3D. It's about. But 4K. doesn't it still have 3D on like, it? Yeah, I mean, it's I still built in. Just a 4K is the new thing. Uh, uh, I haven't picked up my glasses a in lot like of, a year. Uh, I mean, I, I think I think with VR, the yeah. big thing it has going for it is it is new. It, it feels fresh because yeah. you look at the sort of stagnation of game design. We talk about it every week on here. You know, where are the new IP? Where are the new genres? Where's the true evolution? Sure, we're pushing graphics, but nothing really new. And Connect didn't set the world on fire. Um, Sony Move didn't set the world on fire. So we look back to the Wii um, launching in, when was that, 2006? Uh, that was kind of like the last real gaming innovation of, of a you know magnitude that you know kind of captured yes. a massive audience. So it has that going for it. I see, though, two huge stumbling blocks for, for VR that I don't know how you get around. One is the cost. Yep. Unless you're going to bundle this. That's the biggest the, one. If you're going to bundle this to the console... It's what it's an eight hundred dollar console. If you're going to say it requires a PC, that is not going to have universal appeal anymore at all. The second stumbling block is one of the big desires with the Wii and with Connect was to remove um, peripherals to make gaming more accessible. To me, if we're going to go down this dark and kind of dangerous Wally future where everyone's jacked into their headset and holding a controller. To me, that almost seems way more tech savvy and almost more uncomfortable for an average person than sitting there and playing a 3DS, sitting there and, and waggling their arms and we sport. Yeah. I mean, if we can get holograms like Star Wars where they're just shooting out of a flat surface, great. But having to wear a helmet, like I don't. Can you picture, you know, all all of your high school friends or your your family friends or your relatives all getting together and sitting with their helmets on together? It just seems so <laughs> I awkward. don't know. Like, you see, I, I think that what, yeah. what we're saying is that, like, the problem is that a lot of the other technologies we just mentioned, they're like stepping stone tech. Mm-hmm. Whereas VR is something, look, no matter what, like, since the 80s, 70s, we've been talking about something in the style of VR, right? Now mm-hmm. it's becoming possible and plausible to make it, like, an actual experience, right? Wait, wait, wait. Was the virtual boy not an actual <laughs> That red dot for you? screen, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a lot of websites, uh, by the way, I keep uh, using virtual boy pictures as like VR headsets. And oh, people, brilliant. <laughs> people in the comments are like, that's uh, the virtual boy, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I just think amazing. that, look, if it becomes a normal part of your life, like imagine, like, I don't know, if you've got like a, a smaller brother or something, right? And in school now they've got access to like tablets, right? Like it's becoming right. more common. So that will be like a, a substitute to textbooks and so on and so forth over time, of course. But then you're going to get to the point where like when you go to college or whatever, like if you want to study to be a pilot or a doctor, it's all going to be VR simulated. It's a way more efficient and practical way of learning than reading a book about how to do it if you can simulate doing it. So if it's a normal thing in life in general, then how would it not be a normal thing to 
use that for entertainment. I think that it's going to become more prominent. I think that the idea of VR is that we're going to see more so than ever video games and film converge to be even more of a interactive kind of entertainment experience. I agree with you on like the, if you get used to it, then it feels normal. Like in the same way you see, you know, 18 month olds have iPads and they're yeah, playing exactly. you know, their, their temple runs. My, my issue though, and question for you is, okay, portability, mobility is, is ever growing. So with this thing, you cannot wear this on the go. You cannot wear this when you're in a room with a, I mean, if you hold your iPhone, you can still take in the world around you and be be useful, you know, getting off the bus, um, you know, going from class to class, putting stuff in your locker. If you have a gigantic headset on, or even if they do shrink it down, you're basically telling the rest of the world, like, I am locked off from you. Yeah, but that's what you're doing nowadays anyway. Look at, like, when I used to take the but bus to university, just so, it, it, it you just so look at the, yeah, everybody's looking down at their phone, right? Like, it, I, I, Why would you be using this thing on the move, though? That's why do you... Yeah, but okay, you, how about, you walking how around about with a Google on Glass? Is that not VR to a certain extent? Like, no, in I mean, it's not. Now, there's there's it? nothing virtual. Like, sure, like, virtual. yeah, the UI no. maybe, but no, you're still in the real world. Yeah, I know, but what if they like they bring in functionality of virtual elements, right? Like you'll be able to have elements come into the real world, whatever you want to call it. But in an ideal world, what Google Glass hopefully is what they're hoping is going to become is also something that interacts with the real world through virtual elements, right? I mean, I think that's where the HoloLens, the Microsoft thing kind of differs from like Oculus is that that seemed like a window into a world that was augmented by you know, virtual reality by 3D images, whereas Oculus is sort of like a shut-in, closed-off, zoomed-in gaming or movie-watching experience. In you know, its like, first version, to be fair. Uh, true, yeah. but, but how could you how could you play? Because look at the 10 first mobile phone and what we have now, the world. right? Well, well, sure, but I'm just saying, if you're going to open up the lenses or something, or have it be integrated with the world, is every game then going to be, you know, Pong? Because like. I, I don't know. Like the, the the thing is, you see, like the the biggest issue is that we're also talking about stuff like from our perspective as like you know hardcore gamers or whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, right? So it's like fact is more people play you know Angry Birds and these types of experiences. So maybe yeah, maybe that is the future where the biggest games are just going to be like simple, very 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 kind of like you know just few buttons and nothing too complicated to them, and then you will have. Uh, I think gaming elements, as I said before, converge with film where we're going to experience it in a way where you're going to watch the film and you're going to be almost like in a telltale type experience where you're going to be able to interact and maybe play the character, whatever it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, that's super... I, I, I was wondering, um, do we, any of you know the name of this thing? They showed it off, I think, a couple of CESs ago, right? <laughs> Where you're on the stand and you can walk on it and, and it. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. like a field thing. Yeah, that thing. Like yeah, that that thing is also it's very very rough because the problem with that thing is it works. Everybody has said that it does work. It's basically like kind of it's the size of a treadmill. So yeah. first of all, that's an issue. Um, but it does work. <laughs> the issue with it though is it is ridiculously huge. It's going to be very expensive. And more importantly than that, it is so, so loud. You have to have, like, noise-canceling headphones and to, like, there's an, what about the like game. There's an people. even bigger issue. The fact that if you're playing Battlefield and you're walking for, like, 10, 15 minutes, you're going to have to stop. <laughs> like, especially if you got to do the running, like, unless you're, like... Yeah, you don't want to run. Yeah, like, I'm not, <laughs> try, I'm not trying to run and vault over, like, in med. Yeah. I'm going to get tired. I'm going to need to take a seat after 20 minutes, and, and no. So Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think that's just an obsession that, like... Um, you know, a lot of companies have new companies, older companies of kind of like uh, that we want to like actually recreate ourselves in a virtual reality. Right. And then like actually physically act everything out. But the problem is with the way that society is structured right now, it just makes no sense because people go to play games to escape it or whatever. It's not you don't want to just simulate your day to day life there. So the Matrix in real life coming in two years, guys. I mean, do you think that there's any. <laughs> We got very, very, very interested in in the Wii motion controls. We got very, very interested in Connect. Very, very interested in who did? Um, well, I'm, well, I'm just saying as a society in Connect was a failure. I don't know how. Yeah, you I don't. Yeah, well, the Wii Mote was okay, but when it first came out, game. if you remember that trailer where they showed the girl scanning in her skateboard and then it was in the game, there was a lot of hype around that. That, that never happened. Yeah, yeah but that's all it was. Realized that that was fake. Well, again, it's always again, been but hype. Do you, you don't think that VR is 
similar in the sense that it's just another thing for people to get excited about because tech it, it's easier to go and say let's create new tech instead of double down on quality and substance, we're now getting games, like you're saying, that are simplifying themselves. To me, it just feels like a dumbing down of society in general. Like, we'd rather have whiz-bang than actual quality because you look at what these... I mean, sure, from a medical or a scientific standpoint, brilliant impl- you know, implementations of yeah, VR. Yeah, that's but- where it's going to be the most important. Like, we're talking... Like, bringing VR just for gaming is, is small fry. Like, th- so trust me, the reason why Facebook... Uh, no, absolutely not. The okay. reason why Facebook bought Oculus is not because they were like, hey, we could make a lot of money in the gaming industry. Right. Yeah. That, trust me, that's not the reason why they bought it. The reason why they bought it is because of its other applications to medicine, science... Um, pilots, um, driving schools. I mean, there's just so many applications in day-to-day life that they're going to be able to execute on with that thing. So and, uh, that's and, and, that's what's going to yeah, be the big, and, big money. And that I agree with. Like, imagine somebody that that's uh, immobilized; they can't walk. You put this thing on their head, and somehow with their mind, they can walk again. Like, you know, that that that's crazy. But Scott, do you think this is being forced on our throats, like as a gaming device? just because they don't have anything new to show. Like, we obviously all agree for other uses, it's, it's fantastic, but we keep getting it hammered home that this is the future of gaming, blah, 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 blah. Do you think that's just because there's nothing, nothing else for them to show? I don't, think it's been, I don't think it's been hammered home. I think they're, these new companies are coming up and they're trying to push something that's unique. I mean, I personally, I bought the Oculus Rift 1 and the second one, mm-hmm. and that was a, I think it was a year or two apart, and I could see a dramatic jump in terms of that quality in terms of like the screen but uh, even for me that was quite i'm quite a tech savvy person i was just struggling to up like the dk2 mm-hmm. it was just such a nightmare to sort right. of use and on, on a daily basis which is a nightmare in terms of like playing games and stuff so I have a qu- for me that's gotta be improved yeah, it's like, gotta be, be optimized like a- of course i have a question i have oh, a yeah. question for scott all right you say, you're saying mm-hmm. you had all these problems with it right but even let's yep. say you could run it 100% smoothly and you have no issue setting mm-hmm. it up. Would you rather play I, I'm sorry to keep bringing up uncharted but would you rather play uncharted 4 with with the Oculus on or would you rather just play in a traditional manner with just a control? A- again, assu- assuming um, it works the way Oculus is meant to work. Well, Oculus is more I'd use a controller and obviously the headset. If that's what you mean. What you mean without yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, or yeah, or yeah, I mean them? would you rather do it in um, a traditional sense or with the Oculus? The experience I had with the Oculus was like, the good ones were really good. Like they're very immersive. You have like your headset on, but it's, again, it's why it's quite chunky, and it, it can be quite like um, quite jarring if you play it for too long. Isn't it, it just, kind of it just, just like feels... a stressor as well? In the same way that like 3D on the 3DS was so cool on launch night, but then most people turned it off because it's an, it's not as relaxing. It's not as simplistic. It's not as just organic as sitting there with the controller or with the handheld playing the game. Like you're attaching this thing onto your head. You got to worry mm-hmm. about even dumb little things, sweaty hair, or, you know, irritated yep. eyes, yeah. all that kind of little stuff that if they found a way to do it without the headset, I, I would be not, so much not, more behind. It won't this. ever be like no headset, but it'd be a lot more smaller, a lot more like you just throw it on. It won't like, it's just like almost like a pair of but, glasses. But that stuff gives people I headaches. Like I, I've heard people like get headaches the same way. Like, me with it when I go see a movie in 3D at, uh, at a theater, like it takes like a good half hour for my mind to adjust. That like, okay, this is what's happening now. So, well, yeah, you I, like I think again, it's ju- it's just because we're not used to it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's the same thing. Like, look, any other technology that like revolutionized like the, our experience on Earth, it's like it's the same exact thing. Like, if it's not common to your day to day, but if you did it from like your from grade one, right? Every day you had to put that thing on, your body will just adapt to it. You, you think? Know? You think so? Yeah, right. because it, it's just like anything else. Uh, the, it, we're just not used to it. Like, just imagine, even in theory, like what is the whole concept of like putting yourself in a different world? Like that's insane. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. our bodies weren't meant for that. You know? <laughs> well, <laughs> so it's right like, there. That to me, that sounds time. like why are we? Why are we doing that? Like why? Because why, we why? have an obsession of trying to create kind of like ourselves yeah i I don't want to get used to it like i don't want to suffer for like a month yeah but you don't have to suffer what if they make the experience optimized right like i just think that again the problem is like you see on one hand you have people who are like even you zach right You, you say oh we don't see any improvements in gaming 
mm-hmm. and you know, like at, at the end of the day, we, yes, we do see improvements. You know what I mean? They become whatever. They run smoother, uh, but it's just such minor little things that the next big thing they can advertise to you is this. Like, there's nothing. What are they going to be able to tell you? Oh, we're going to have 4K resolution. Oh, in sure. Games, I, I don't deny know? tech improvements. I'm talking like content slash quality improvement. I feel like there hasn't been an Oculus game, and I, again, I understand it's in its early stages, but. The Oculus isn't being touted. 3D wasn't being touted because there was an incredible game that required this tech or an incredible game that required 3D. It was just an add-on to already existing experiences to make them more appealing mm-hmm. f- to sell. Yeah, but that's – so you answered your own question there. You right. said that there, ha- yeah, there hasn't been a game that's been built from the ground up for that experience, right? So there's your issue. It's like – Well, there's, there's a few, but obviously there's small indie titles that don't yeah. really capture. Yeah. So in the next five years, do we see – any sort of, I mean, obviously VR will continue to exist and grow and improve yep. and, and probably be mm-hmm. sold, but do we see it stepping on the traditional PS5, Xbox 2, you know, Wii U? I think it might lead even longer than that, to yeah. be honest. I think, I, I think it's like I mean, a I'm decade, saying 10 years. 15 years from now yeah. is when it's okay, going to so be a big deal. That's something I've thought about as well, is maybe we're just, even what Microsoft showed with the HoloLens, like that seems so far off. Mm-hmm. Even from what we have right now, that seems so distant that... Perhaps the oh they'll release of, a version of it I'm sure sooner than ten years but the problem is it's not going to be nowhere near what they say it's going to yeah, do so, so, just like yeah, the connect sure. exactly. just like anything else so it's like if you want to see what they actually showed we're a good little while Come away back in twenty thirty five yeah it, it's yeah. gonna like I said I think the biggest hurdle for VR to jump over is going to be cost because it's going to be in, like there's no way you could release this thing and get it to a mass audience without yeah. taking a loss on it like there's just yeah. simply no way so it's gonna have to be your typical kind of like gaming model of where you just get the hardware into the hands of the people and then you make money on the software so that's probably what it's gonna be I'll, i mean if it's not ready to be sold if it's not ready to be mass you know marketed why do you think they're putting so much i mean obviously we gotta look towards the future but it almost falls in line with like the hype cycle of games like let's show this off five years too early just to get people you know, all razzled up for it when nobody's going to be buying a, uh, you know, you're not going to go to Target and find a VR headset anytime soon. Yeah, I think Oculus Rift is almost doing like an early access thing where you you can try the stuff early, mm-hmm. um, but you know there's going to be a few issues, things might not work, but you're still getting, you'll be like one of the first people to ever play that, that game or that device. I mean, that's sort of what yeah. they're going. I think Oculus is making money. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, yeah. Oculus, but yeah, you see, Oculus is going to be in a different uh, area because, as I said, I don't think Oculus is going to be making its big money from gaming. I think yeah. that they're going to make a ton of cash selling to, like, all the universities, selling mm-hmm. to uh, scientists, uh, selling to trade schools, whatever. Because there you can sell at a high price and then you can make money on your on the services post that, you know what I mean? Like sell specific software to specific schools. So I, I think that at the end of the day, what VR is going to do is it's going to be like a, a whole new industry where you're going to be able to, like you're going to see co- companies pop up that address only VR. Yeah, so, so maybe it's currently just being applied in the gaming space because those are some of the most tech hungry people uh mm, yeah because to me it sounds like we're all agreeing that vr super cool super futuristic super for sure coming but maybe not super for gaming yeah oh, well, um, well i think, I think that well, for the gaming we want sorry yeah. to interrupt you scott so i was gonna say i think it's got potential for gaming i think it's definitely for me one of the most immersive experiences i think i've had where you, you literally turn your head your whole char- your whole character is turning, mm-hmm. uh, massive speakers on your like, headphones on your ears, and it's just it feels like you're in the game. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. But it just needs to be that the cost needs to be go down. It needs to be a little bit more accessible. I just want to stick my USB in, and then it just works, or even like a wireless wireless headset. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I, I think we've proven as a society the number one thing we value is convenience. Like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you, you've okay. seen it over and over. You know what I mean? Like, iTunes iTunes has like saved music, right? Just because they said, okay, we're gonna make it super convenient to buy stuff, and people are willing to buy instead of pirate, right? Yeah, it's just For so sure. much easier. So, yeah, so I just think that, again, uh, uh, that will be a huge factor going forward even more so. It's just convenience. Because if, if it's going to be a complicated thing to set up, then it will stay um, kind of like, um, you know, in businesses and in educational facilities. It won't become a household thing. So 
it's going to be difficult. But then again, that's how computers started, right? I mean, like before there's like uh, computers, when they just started, it was like a whole gymnasium you would have to fill up to have one computer, right? right. And they were all only available for the biggest of businesses. Then Apple comes along, they make a home version and boom. Very, very, all very good points. And I just a couple quick hits um, before we kind of jump out of this segment here. The one console future, um, is that something that anybody really subscribes to anymore? Do you think that Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, because of, you know, the cloud and because of downloads, would it ever get to a point where it's all about software and the hardware? It's just a generic box. These companies have too much pride for that. Like, specifically Nintendo, they, they wouldn't. Like, you're saying about one box where we're going to get Halo, Uncharted, and Mario, like, all on one box? Mm-hmm. Nah, I don't see it ever happening. Now, I, I, I think they're going to have to, especially Nintendo. Cause I think they got too much pride. Nintendo will go put Mario. Yeah, but Nintendo, yeah, but it's going to be either rather it's going to be adapt or perish, and that's it. Nah, they rather put be. it on a phone than, than to make on a console. Like Mario on a phone will sell more than than. Yeah, but okay, but a phone can act as a console, right? Like some people will argue uh, that phones are already consoles, eh, right? Sure, sure. If, if that's the so, meaning you want to give to it, then yeah. I mean, I guess who who does that serve? Having one console that serves to me the consumer consumers. exactly. Which, oh, yeah, perfect. which never is the fact. Yeah, not, not many things go like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but the problem will be, it, it'll be just an issue of, like, how do you, like, I don't know that the companies that are going to manufacture the hardware are going to be the companies that manufacture the software anymore. That will be the issue. Because it's almost like if we look at uh, phones, right? Like, we've got Samsung and Apple, let's say those are kind of the biggest dogs, right? So mm-hmm. if you look at the two of them, they don't specialize in producing software. Yes, they have software that's bundled in, and of course they have completely different operating systems that they work on. But sure. at the end of the day, the a lot of the games and a lot of the apps are available for Android and Apple devices. So mm-hmm. I, I think that there is a good chance that there will be different options of the same kind of like console experience. Like you might have some one manufactured by Microsoft, one manufactured by Sony. But I don't think that exclusive content is going to be as much uh, of a factor. I mean, aren't you kind of just describing what we have right now? Like we have a Sony box, we have a Microsoft box. The majority of the games are available on both. There's yeah, some yeah. perks. And- yeah, but it's going to become even more because I just don't know if... Uh, so you predict more consoles rather than less. Like a Samsung console, a might Panasonic. be. Yeah, I think it might become more standardized. You know what I mean? Like there won't be as much uh, of a factor attached to each specific console. I think it's hard to, you know, if you did one console, you'd have to erase so many relationships between parts manufacturers, between Sony and Microsoft, and game companies. All of a sudden, all of that would be completely eroded, and I don't know how or why they would just trash all of that pre-existing stuff and. And also, you'd then be kind of, I mean, either one pl- person would corner the market entirely, whoever made it, whether it was Samsung, Nintendo, whoever, um, and retail would have less things to sell. It would be more digital and software, which, again, that is something that in the past has been a real hurdle for them is, is they need that shelf space. Yeah, well, they need it now. You see, the problem is we're talking in the future, right? So it's a very different question and how far in the future we're talking. Because no matter what, you can see the shift towards digital everywhere. Books, Mm -hmm. movies, so on and so forth. I mean, you see, look, the interview, yes, it didn't make incredible amount of money, but I'm sure that it's going to break even and make money. It lost $30 million. Like, yeah, but they haven't released the DVDs yet. Well, no, yeah, I mean, and they haven't gotten licensing from Netflix, so it's like they're gonna make their money no, back. No, no, like movie. Sony has said, like, hey, we we took a loss on this. They're taking a thirty million dollar loss. Like, that's already done. Like all this slow money that you're talking about, maybe one day. Like the the interview's been on Netflix for like five days now or something, like four days. Like those deals are done. Mm-hmm. After well, after all yeah, that's okay. calculated, may, it's may, still lost yeah, thirty fair, million. Fair enough. I guess maybe. Look, maybe we're still not there. I mean, you obviously see people still like the whole physical copy thing. I personally do like the physical copy, but I, I'm yeah. very much accepting of the fact that slowly and surely we're going to shift towards a digital future. So oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, For, no matter what, that's that? yeah. So, but if you're thinking about that, if it's all digital, then it becomes even more tricky, you know, and becomes more tricky to like, how do you market all this stuff? And that's why I'm saying like exclusives is, it's a very, very expensive thing to have. So how do you warrant 
an exclusive, especially if, let's say, somebody comes out with another box at a cheaper price point that plays most games but just doesn't have the exclu- the exclusives, you know? Yeah. So it, I, th- I think that's why it's going to be very, very tricky to maintain the whole idea of, oh, we have exclusives only on our box. It kind of just depends where things go. If you think of TVs as sort of selling you a digital thing. You don't go and buy a TV program in the store. You, you watch it digitally, but yet there still is Vizio, Samsung, this, that. Yeah, yeah of course. It, it could be that for games as well, and it kind of just depends where they want to make their money and how things differentiate. You know, you might pick this TV because it has a better picture, but if we're talking consoles, it would be really hard to sell one box that gives you, you know, 8K graphics and every other box gives you 4K because then for development, how would that work? And I remember listening to a bunch of uh, One Up Yours podcasts, gosh, six, seven yep. years ago Long now, with time Dennis ago. Dyack. Oh, my God. And uh, he was talking about a one-console future, and he predicted it for this current generation, like the PS4, Xbox One gen, because, again, this is mm-hmm. when the 360 first launched. And you know, I've heard people even say, like, oh, will we have a PS5, a next console? But I think, similar to VR, this is something that we've proven with you know, internet companies, we've proven with download speeds, we've proven with server failures and, and issues that this is something that I think is way down the line, not like, oh, four years in the future. Microsoft failing with sort of their download-only Xbox One. I don't think that anybody is really ready for what maybe people thought we, we could be ready for digitally. You know what everybody is ready for? What? The games that we've been playing now and not five years in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, we can definitely. Well, no, well, because I'm just because I'm just worried about. Damn, what am I gonna do for the background? Because already the Nintendo stuff, I can't put that that footage in the background because it's only like two minutes right. of footage. Just put like aliens and robots. <laughs> yeah. And Back no, no, to the no. Future pictures. I watched this. Uh, I watched this. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, Lucy, the Scarlett Johansson movie last yeah. night. And uh, according to that movie, once you achieve you know max brain power, everything just becomes like a black blob, and then you turn into a starry uh, flash. That, that, that's it's such a lamb. that's such a dumb myth, and I I don't know where it started, w- guys. Like we do not use ten percent of our brains. That's a movie trope that is not yeah. real. So- <laughs> I learned that last night that it it's completely false. Yeah, no, that, that I don't know where it started. Like it's so ridiculous, but whatever. <laughs> well, I I just think that it's one of those things that's like a myth that is really popular. But with that in mind, we really do not maximize our brain no, no, capabilities. But, no, yet. but we don't use ten percent of it though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, even well, though it feels like some yeah, people, yeah, do. some people might <laughs> even I mean, less. <laughs> seeing her grow all these different appendages, I was just like, man, if brains could do that, somebody would have figured out a little bit of it by now. It can't be that that crazy. But uh, what we've been playing this week, um, actually, before we get to that, because I, I like to, to talk Nintendo, and I think as polarizing as Nintendo is, I think they're quite a... Um, they're very interesting to discuss because they do things quite differently, and they sort of operate on their own wavelength in comparison to Sony and Microsoft. Do you think that they do abandon hardware? Max, it sounded like you are, are leaning that way. Yeah, I, I just think that Nintendo, if they were to abandon hardware, I mean, their software is so strong that they could survive with that. I think that if they stay in the hardware market, I think it's most likely in the mobile, like the 3DS type thing. Um, I don't know... Um, if Nintendo maintains a home console, let's say mm-hmm. five years from now or something like that, I just, I just think that again they might do it because of pride and whatever. But I just think business wise, uh, there's going to come a point where whoever they get, like a brand new CEO or somebody who just like thinks a little bit um, more on the actual like financial side of things, and they'll look at the numbers and. It, it's pretty obvious. Like if you look at the numbers in terms of, you know, like if we don't look at the Wii because the Wii was like an anomaly, you you look at the numbers, their numbers have been dwindling down, you For know? Sure. So I, I think that they're trending down and I think that they, their focus is focus on the 3DS and then imagine if they say, okay, yeah, we're going to release the next Mario game on the other consoles. I mean, that's going to do, it's going to do insane numbers, you know? Oh, for sure. That would make the most, I think, monetary sense for them. What about the thought that they are, or it's been rumored, I'm not sure how confirmed, but that they're looking at making a home console 
portable kind of mix next time, that it would be a device that plays the same games whether you're on your big TV or you're on the bus um, and you can kind of just take the handheld with you or maybe it's even a game pad that you can just take on the go so it becomes kind of a unified portable console experience. That could work. Uh, yeah, I, I think that, that that might be more likely for them to go with because I think that, you know, like... I, I found like the whole PlayStation TV thing kind of interesting. So I mm-hmm. think that there is a good chance that Nintendo polishes that experience, you know, where you have like a tiny little box next to your TV. And then when you come home, you just maybe there's like, you know, a Wi Fi signal or something between the two. And whoop, and you're playing on the big screen, you yeah, know, and c- then cause the 3DS just acts as a controller at that point. Yeah, because Sony's super close to making that a reality, like with, with the Vita and whatnot. So uh, no, I mean it works. Yeah, it, it I'm, does work. It doesn't now work already. super well just because of latency and things like that. But it works. I think the idea for the Nintendo thing would take it even a step further, and whether it's cartridge based or mini disc or, or God only knows some new format SD cards, you would like not Wi-Fi, not remote play, but literally the same game would work on the home box and on the portable. So you, you know, they don't go, oh, we're going to go with crazy 1080p, you know, realistic visuals. They say, hey, we've mastered this art style. We're going to keep it this way. And so our next handheld is more powerful. Our next home console, you know, isn't as powerful as the next Sony Microsoft. So these games can be instantly transferred. You can take, you know, the next Zelda, the next Mario, Mario Kart 9, on the go, at home, doesn't matter. Same experience across portable and console. Yep, I, I think that's a lot more likely than just uh, another, like, you know, traditional home console. Sure. Pricing gets weird there. Like, do you then charge for what it would cost to have a portable and a home? Do they just say, no, we're going to make it one price nope. and just one, one up price. the competition? Yeah, they have, they have, have to make it one price. One price. Yeah. If it's two prices, it's going to fail. So from that standpoint, if their kind of haha like, exclusive thing is that you can take these games on the go, does that... Does that reinvigorate Nintendo? Do people look at them differently if they have that extra feature that most likely we don't see Xbox making a handheld? We don't see, I mean, perhaps Sony turns the Vita into some sort of similar thing. But if Nintendo had that as their thing, that you can take these games wherever you want, would that make them more popular? Um, I I don't think they'll ever come back to, like, quote-unquote mainstream. I mean, they're super mainstream, but they're not Sony, they're not Microsoft because they don't have the third-party support. As as, yeah. as long as um, the Xbox and the PS4 are getting games that are not on Wii U, there's just no way that it can compete or, or whatever the next console is. They they have to have some type of parity just as far as the internals of these machines. It has to be able to play the same games so that it's not a complete hassle for for um, Activision to port over Call of Duty or, or Destiny 2, whatever the case is. They, they need to be able to have the same games. And they got to make it so that it's not, like, a mess to develop for. Like, that gamepad, like, nobody wants to, you know, mess with it, really. Like, who wants to sit there and try to put something on that gamepad? You know what I mean? I think if you do that sort of portable home console convergence thing, you lose even more third-party support because now they have to make a game that works on this portable, that works on the console, that, you know, inevitably is a different power level than the PS5 or the Xbox, whatever. And maybe Nintendo just says, hey, we're going to court the 3DS developers into making, you know, the intelligent systems, guys like that, to make full-blown games, and they do their own thing. I mean, unless they go with power parity, I don't see how they ever get back into sort of the the, the mainstream AAA yeah. third-party, mm-hmm. you know, area again. Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the issue also becomes, like, if... Th- Obviously, if they have a big enough install base, trust me, the developers will go sure. through all the hurdles to <laughs> develop for it. So it, for it's sure. just now it's it, it's not that they don't want to. It just doesn't make sense financially. You know what I mean? They're like looking at the numbers. It's like if we put this much money into porting this thing, um, how much money can we expect to make? You know, so I, I think that's going to be an issue for them. Um, that's always going to be an issue. I, I think it's going to be genuinely just interesting to see where Nintendo goes because we're always going to have like kind of like, you know, that soft spot for Nintendo in terms of nostalgia and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think that it's going to be very interesting if Nintendo does not try to, you know, get some new um, kind of IP or some something new in there. I don't know that they could attract a lot of new people because I think that a lot of us who love their games, we love them because of nostalgia. There's an element of nostalgia that clouds your judgment. And how do we, for example, like how do you enforce to the next generation 
to play more Nintendo games if the install base is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. You know what I mean? So I, I think they need some new stuff, something like... Look, Splatoon is like the first new IP in a long while that That's seems... not the in- right one. Yeah, I know it's not the right one, but in terms of like, you know, at least it's something new. It's not Mario, yeah. Yoshi. It's not the same characters over and over again, which again, those games are great. But if you want to attract a new audience, I think they need to continue supporting projects like Bayonetta and stuff like that, mm-hmm. where, you know, it's it's very different. It's a good game, but it's very different to what you think of when you think of a Nintendo published or developed titles. Yeah, I think the parallel might be Disney because... You know, there's no way Disney ever starts making R-rated animated movies, and I don't see Nintendo ever being like, hey, we now make Grand Theft Auto, and we make these mature yeah, yeah. gore-filled mm-hmm. games. So maybe it's more along the lines of Disney use their huge cash pile to buy Marvel and sort of then bring that brand under the Disney umbrella, and people now are kind of starting to associate a little bit of Marvel with Disney, but mostly it's Marvel. So Nintendo, you know, like you're saying with Bayonetta, goes out and buys other studios or buys... Well, some relationship. N- with yeah, publishers. Nintendo's not buying any. Like Nintendo doesn't have the money to do that. Like, no, no, no. they have a ton of cash. Yeah, I know, but th- Nintendo is sitting on a few billion dollars. Well, yeah, so but they, they're fine. Yeah, but they go out and try to like. <laughs> I almost like laughed out loud. He said, "Go buy Marvel." First of all, Marvel's not for no, sale. No, yeah, of course. Yeah, like no, they Nintendo can't, can't afford to do scale. something. Like yeah. that. Oh, not at that level. I'm just saying. Like, I feel like Nintendo as a as a game maker is sunk in the sense that people for the last whatever, 30, 40 years have associated a certain kind of game with Nintendo. They have stuck to their guns. And so to come out at Next E3 and say, we're bringing a new console and they have some, you know, Grand Theft Auto styled game as their, you know, prime, you know, showpiece, that would feel so weird. weird. Yeah. And I feel like people would almost make fun of it, even if it was good, mm-hmm. because it didn't fit their expectations. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the same way, if Disney came out with our CG movie for this year is this gory Dead Space style, mm-hmm. you know, space murder mystery like yeah no you'd be like but i think with that with that comparison i think that honestly nintendo is more like pixar than Mm -hmm. disney you know what Mm -hmm. i mean where um they're known for that thing whereas disney is still a lot more diversified yeah you know what i mean so i I think that um nintendo is a lot more like pixar in that regard and uh with that in mind still i think that like that's a very fair comparison they both focus on quality and kind of like you know releasing a polished product all the time. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that even if you look at Pixar, you can see that they started kind of, you know, exercising the range. There's still family-friendly films, but right. a lot of them have to, have been a bit of a darker tone and have had a little bit more intrigue for the adults. You know what I mean? So I think yeah. that that's what, something that, like, look, people go watch Pixar movies and more adults watch Pixar movies than kids. So, for sure. Well, I think that's why, like, the initial... Um, at the Wii reveal, the Legend of Zelda for Wii that had the darker tone with Link fighting Ganon, um, whatever E3 that was, was so... Exciting, like it, it, yeah. Yeah, because it was like a darker tone, a exactly. new take. And instead, you know, Twilight Princess tried to be darker, but still in a very, you know, GPG way. Yeah, it was darker in terms of, like, aesthetically, I think, Color more so than the yeah. actual, yeah. like, game, Not, you but, know? Which, but it, it doesn't have to be Nintendo that that makes these games because Re- Resident True. Evil Four was on the GameCube, uh, Metal Gear was on the GameCube. Like th- these games can still be on there, and it doesn't have to be Nintendo that's behind them. Well, the problem with their current install base, they're gonna have to be behind. Well, no, I'm yeah, I'm, ta- I'm, I'm talking about like for issue. like a next console. Like, ma- I think the Wii U makes them look at who they want to be. Either okay, we're gonna continue to try to be a console that lines up with ps4 and xbox one or we're going to double down and say it's a nintendo box and they make so much profit off of producing their own games and avoiding all those you know fees and whatnot that it's still viable for them to say hey we're going to be a niche market console that 90 percent focuses on our own made games or they have to go some totally different tech route like the Wii did which then gained a lot of um in, you know install base and like you were saying max brought in developers because there was money to be made but to me, I don't know where their mindset is. We talk about them being stubborn and, and prideful. I worry that, again, they will try to say, hey, we can line up with Sony and Microsoft. We make you know good games. We do this. And you know, you look at the GameCube. Resident Evil 4, an, an amazing game and, and definitely very mature. But when you have that indigo-colored cube sitting next to like the sleek PlayStation 2, like I don't know how you can get out of your heads that this is – they aren't the same. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like it, 
And I, even I, I for think, me, I can look beyond it and mm-hmm. say, hey, I, Mario still is for adults, but I think most people can. Yeah, I think, look, I think at the end of the day, um, if you, even with the Wii, let's be honest, uh, Nintendo consoles are a complementary box. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They're not your primary box. Uh, and I think that that's something that, look, they need to either accept or if they want to change that perception, they're going to need to change the way they're presenting themselves. Because yeah. otherwise, mm-hmm. it's just not going to happen. I think that the general public is always going to view them at this point as a complementary box. Like you buy a PS4 or an Xbox to play majority of games. And then additionally to that, if you are even more so into gaming, you'll buy a Nintendo box to play Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, fill in the blank. Yeah. And I have no issue with them being in that space. They're a great, like, yeah. complimentary box, like you said, to whatever other console you have. Because there's not too much of a point in having both an Xbox One and a PS4, unless you're us. Like, the regular consumer doesn't need to have both. You can play Madden on either or. But if you can have yeah. a Wii U for, like, your Mario and your Smash, like you said. So, uh, I th- yeah. if they can just keep that space and just keep doing it, but like, I don't know where their pride falls in line with that, so... Yeah, I I think that another another thing that will become interesting for Nintendo, going back a little bit on the um, mobile side of things, is will people see value in buying the console version when most of these games get now a 3DS release? You know what I mean? Like, is Super Smash Brothers on the Wii U that much better for the general consumer than yeah. the 3DS version? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I think it has. Is Mario Kart 8 that much better on the Wii U than it is in the 3DS version? I think for them, probably, their handhelds obviously sell way better than their home consoles currently, but is it locking yourself into a a tight market, like an age-based market and a region-based market? Because you don't see, I mean, sure there are some, but you don't see as many, you know, 25-year-old Nintendo fanboys playing 3DS in America as you would in Japan, and you see way more, you know, 12-year-olds playing Pokemon than you do, you know, adults. And so does that, yeah, maybe that is just their strength and they should play to that. At what point do you think, or or rather, why do you think Nintendo kind of lost, they were the primary console for years. And then do you think it was just the... Inferior hardware, that's it. Like they stopped... You think that's what it was? That's absolutely what it was. They stopped making hardware that was comparable to everything else. It started with the Nintendo 64, the choice to make cartridges that are more expensive Mm -hmm. and hold less data so I don't know. So their compa- I, I mean, their competitors. What about a commitment though to tr- family friendly? Yeah, content? I think that, that's I, more I, what I, it I, is no. because I think that yeah, I think that that's the issue because at the end of the day, we've seen over and over again that um, I, I think the last time there was an obsession with graphics was PS2. You know, like that. That cycle. Mm-hmm. I think that in the PS3 and Xbox 360, at the very early get go, there was a big focus on it. But now we've seen more and more people kind of like um, push away from the focus on graphics. You know, um, there is less of a focus on how good is this game, how good does it look, more so on how good does it play. And that, of course, you could talk about frame rate in that discussion which is important but i think that it, we see a ton of games nowadays that don't maybe look revolutionarily or look incredible but people play the heck out of them and people enjoy the heck out of them just because they play responsive they're very satisfying uh and they hit that kind of like you know satisfaction that uh, uh, kind of like that endorphin reaction in your body where you just enjoy the actual playing it's very satisfying yeah so i, I think maybe nintendo kind of lucked in with uh to like as a default for like oh we're family based i don't think that was ever like their intention because even on wii you had uh games like what was that that the black and white game that also had the blood um man uh mad world yes like mad world like they were still trying to do like stuff that trying but yeah and then they failed yeah they failed at it and then they're like okay you know what no we're not doing that we're family like I, I, I think I think no, but look again. The, there is no issue of being family. I think it's just the presentation of like the problem with Nintendo. I think is that they're trying to be family friendly in the 1990s, where now what the, what what we expect. Like if you go watch a 1990s cartoon, right? You look at it now, and it's like, oh, that's pretty cheesy. You know what I mean? And we could have a good mm. laugh at it. But the problem is that now people expect even in a family friendly experience, you don't expect. 
a dumbed down game anymore. You expect still a polished title that still makes you think, that's gonna make your kids think, and is more importantly, now we see companies like Disney and Pixar polish up the whole idea of uh, making the film accessible to both and having enough depth for an adult to enjoy and sometimes even humor that kids just don't even get, you know, it just flies right over their heads. And Nintendo just chose to be only kids and kind of very, very simple, but polished experiences. That's a good point. I mean, I'm looking here at IGN since we brought them up, up as sort of the Mecca reviews. Their game of the year over the last 15 years. Um, 2001, you had Halo Combat Evolved, Battlefield 1942, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Half-Life 2, God of War, Okami, Mario Galaxy, Fallout 3, Uncharted 2, Mass Effect 2, Portal 2, Journey, Last of Us, Dragon Age. I mean, save for Mario Galaxy, um, and I guess Portal 2, although Portal 2 still involves shooting, majority of those games are M-rated. Um, majority of those games involve shooting. So in the movie space, you can do family-friendly in an evolved way. In the game space, if you're not going to have guns, how do you... You know, how, how would do you have any ideas? I mean, maybe this is a totally different discussion, Max. But like, how would you bring family friendly into a, a more mass appeal game yeah. mm-hmm. space? Oh, well, I, I think I, I think look at, at the end of the day, yes, mechanics is going to be the first thing. Is like make the mechanics satisfying. They've got that nailed down. You know, their gameplay is on right. point, so For sure. that's not an issue. So then, what do you go to next? Story. And let's be honest, that's a lacking category. Like, yeah. there is no game that I think of that I'm like, oh, that was a really good story for Nintendo, you know? So I think that's really what you need to do is, like, that will hopefully kind of, like, you know, bridge that gap of, hey, make the story for Mario not just, uh, oh, my God, Bowser kidnapped the princess again. Let's go rescue her. hundred levels later, boss fight against Bowser, Peach is rescued, done. You yeah. know, I, I just think that, there is room there to tell an interesting story. Give these characters more personality than what they currently have, you know? And have, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, have like writers who are like, you know, just go out there, like try to find maybe people who have written uh, and done projects for Pixar and be like, hey, we want to do a serious Mario game. Let's do this. Like, you know, like... And you think that can be accomplished without guns, without shit? Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Why not? Uh, well, I'm just saying, look at the most successful, highly rated games. They all have guns, and that's been something even in the, the Microsoft Sony space that, you know, the quote, normal console space of like, how do we get away from shooting as the, the mode of I interaction? Mean, why and can't we? That's what kids why want. Why can't do. we play a Pixar movie? Like Blitz is saying, um, what, what's a, somebody name a good Pixar movie? I haven't seen one in a long time. Wally Up. Uh, uh, all right, Up. Why yeah. can't we have Up, like, Up be a video game where you're controlling. Because it has no violence. You don't need violence in video games. So, but then it becomes an adventure game like Broken and, Age and or something. And that's fine. I mean, it's it's fine, but it's not going to sell to 25 million people like Assassin's Creed. Why not? If, Nint- uh, if budget, Nintendo's if, making if it with Nintendo characters? Yeah, I, I, think, I think that that's the key. Is that I- then if why doesn't Mario sell like that? It sells, it's, because it doesn't have a story? You think it's not there selling because there's no, no it story? sells because there's, it doesn't sell because there's no Wii U's out there for it to sell to. Like, uh, Mario sells fine. Like, the attach rate for Mario games on Wii U, I'm, I would assume that's pretty high. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. I just... Their, their attach rate is ridiculous. I mean, even with the Wii, remember, that was the issue why so many developers jumped off the Wii is because the install base is massive. But the problem is nobody was buying any games except for Nintendo games. Yeah. Like, they were selling only Nintendo games on that console. The attachment with any other game and publisher was terrible. So you think that, and this is totally off the wall, but if, if we put Mario 3D World on PS4 and Xbox One, you think it would sell as many copies as, as some of these big hitters, like, you know, maybe not like Grand Theft Auto or Assassin's Creed, because they're like, you know, giants in the industry, but Call of Duty, I know, you know, that's still I, a giant, I think but like so. Ghost Numbers I think were so. Lower. Yeah. I think so, because the main reason why is, uh, I'll give you a perfect example, um, a buddy of mine um, who for like the last year he every time i bring up nintendo he would just be like oh my god they're terrible it's a kitty console right and then now he finally bought a wii u and for the last week and a half what he has been playing nothing nonstop, is mario kart 8 and smash Mm -hmm. brothers so i and i tell him like what do you think now he's like dude i love this this is awesome it's so colorful it's such an exciting and different experience to what i'm used to 
And Mm -hmm. I'm like, there you go. Nintendo has that magic thing, you know, like that thing that you can't like, it's not palpable. You can't like even like, you know, put it into words. It's just, you either have it or you don't, you know? So it's like, they have that special thing with their characters, special thing with the way that they make their games. So I think that it would sell a lot, but I also think that there's room for Nintendo to try to, modernize their franchises you know what i mean bring them into the new age with give us characters like just get, explain like why should i care to do this adventure you know what i mean because i think that's what kids and adults alike are looking for now in a m- modern like fully polished experience i would love i think you're you're probably right and i would love if that was right i just have this like gnawing idea in my head that if Zelda had blood, it would sell better, that it would appeal to more, that the Wii U would sell better, that if there was a Mario shooter um, with a darker tone, that if sometimes Mario shoved Luigi, if you know Peach wasn't wearing a formal gown but a skin-tight outfit, mm-hmm. I feel like it would... It would do better. I mean, we look at even like Tomb Raider, and, and obviously Lara Croft is, is modeled as like a super hot girl, but even being a female... That game doesn't do as well as Uncharted, and sure you could say for lots of reasons, but we've seen it over and over that a female main character doesn't sell as well as a male main character. But I think I think I think the issue with that again is it might not just look. There, let's not be uh, you know foolish and let's be honest. Sexism and racism still exist. It's mm-hmm. just a lot more covered up, but it still exists. <laughs> well, co- let's not try Wait, to how is it covered up? Do you not see well, these Twitter we, comments and the comments no, on YouTube? I, I know, but what I mean is like you know in public. Like it's more covered up when it's from person to person. Oh, you know sure, sure. I mean? But online, people it's... are a lot more like hush hush. But then online, you see it and you see what people are really thinking. You know? Yeah. So uh, fact is, it exists. But I also think, to be fair enough, like for example, Tomb Raider. How many copies did that game sell? Three million? No, I think four. Yeah, like four or something. So yeah, four or five. let's be honest. If you make a game and you sell four million copies and you think that that's unsuccessful. There's an issue with the way that you marketed that yeah, game. You totally. know what I mean? So the issue there, it actually proves the opposite. It shows that there are 4 million people that are willing to buy a game with a, mm-hmm. f- with a female uh, protagonist. So I think that that actually disproves that theory. I think that the issue comes down to, uh, th- like, remember me, right? That was the last big kind of, like, push for a female protagonist, right? Sure. And it and did terrible. Yeah, it did terrible. But why? I, I don't. I, yeah, terrible. I don't think it was because of, of the whole woman oh, thing. Oh, for, for sure. I just yeah. wonder. You know, I think about me and, and my ten-year-old self sitting there and watching Full House on the couch versus all of my younger brothers' friends who, since first grade on the playground, have been pretending to be Ezio, been pretending to be Soap, have been pretending to be Marcus Phoenix, and like our country, at least America specifically, is addiction to violence, like. I think that's that's the cool stuff. You want to be the kid in the playground who has Grand Theft Auto, who has yeah. Assassin's Creed. If it's a really great story, if it's a really great character, like I think that appeals maybe to us, and maybe you win over the hardcore, but I don't know how you sell a, a Super Bowl ad spot with Mario instead of with you know Black Ops 3. Well, I think that that, look, at that point, I guess it, it kind of depends what you're trying to get across, like what mm-hmm. what kind of company you're trying to be. Because if your entire goal is to be in the Black Ops position, then yeah, you're going to have to figure out like, what do I need to be like, you know, what is the mass audience or that audience specifically is looking for. But right. with that in mind, I also think that there are a lot of people that simply have not been exposed to Nintendo, and when they are exposed to Nintendo, they get it. You know what yeah. I mean? So, so maybe it's being a, a market-focused company instead of a catch-all company that's trying to get you know, the, the 30 million Madden players or whatever, Assassin's Creed. Instead, you're like, hey, like Tomb Raider, we've got 5 million people we can sell to. I mean, at that point, that's where I just wonder if Nintendo looks and says, well, we could sell... Three million copies of Mario Kart 8 on our own console, or you know, whatever, four, five, six, seven million on the others. What's the point of dropping out of, of the money that the hardware makes? Well, the issue will become is can they continue selling that many consoles? Yeah, you know, yeah, because if your install base keeps shrinking, then obviously that number of games that you sell and the attachment is going to keep shrinking too. Because we have seen, look, when Mario Kart 8 came out, everybody was like, okay, this is going to be the system seller. Like after this, 
the Wii U is going to be back in business. Skyrocket, yeah. yeah. It didn't happen. It, it moved, they barely it, yeah. sold. It moved some, it, it, but de- yeah, definitely. Yeah, but it wasn't like a needle moving, you know? It was, it was just a tiny, like, in the big scheme of things, it was a tiny little spike. It'll be interesting to see six, seven, eight years down the line when, like, my younger brother's age group is in our shoes, like, becoming the YouTubers, becoming the, the prominent voices on Twitter. Will Nintendo wither even further? Because they don't have the people like us who grew up with it and the people a little bit older than us kind of really rah-rah cheering them on, if they lose that hardcore, and not to say we can't play games when we're 50, but we won't be the public voices um, anymore. Yeah. Do they then drop even Speak farther? Speak for yourself. Find video, to... game, it, video game it, grandpa it, channel yeah. coming soon. It, it, if they keep uh, their, like, again, this now gets onto their business side of things, the way they run sure. their business. I think they're going to, like, if they keep doing what they're doing, like, with things like, you know, uh, being uh, anti, like, YouTube and everything like that, I think that it's not smart because if they want, like, again, the idea is let us expose your gains to other people who right. don't have any interest in them. You know what I mean? For sure. Like For sure. we, we can take this game and expose it to other eyeballs that might never even want to buy your console. But after seeing this, they're like, Hmm, even if we can just make them go, Hmm, that's already better than nothing. And this is a perfect example because every week, we could show some of their games and people might go. Yeah, and, and, we, and we keep talking they're... about them. I don't know what I'm doing for background footage, and that is sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last, last last little thing, and then we'll move on to wrap up with what we've been playing here. Um, but do you think Reggie is is a bad guy to have at the top? I mean, I know he's very like well known, and he's very he has notoriety, but I don't think he sort of commands focus, attention, trust in the same way that. For whatever you want to say about a guy like a Jack Tretner, Phil Spencer, people seem to like listen to them and trust them, yeah. and they have vision and focus. And Reggie seems more like just this. He became a me- he became a meme. Face. Like yeah, he, but yeah. I, I think Reggie has become like again. Let's be you fair here. We, we don't know about him a lot, like you know personally, and we don't yeah. know what kind of a business man he is because mm-hmm. we don't get an insight into that. But I think that he's become kind of more like just a public figure. Figurehead, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I I don't yeah. think uh, like. We don't think of him as the leader or, like, you know, a big influence backstage, you know? Like, I think he's become truly just kind of, like, a face to and carry the message, higher, you know? Go, even higher, Nintendo needs to bring in somebody new above him because fr- from everything I've heard, and Max, I'm sure you've heard this as well, like, Nintendo of America doesn't really hold all that much clout and power in, in decision-making. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think that he literally has become, to us or, like, the general public, is he's just the, like, you know, he's the messenger. He has, they yeah. give him the message and then he brings it to us. So I think that's uh, really what it is. And I, I don't know. I mean, I, I get what you're getting at where, you know, we're at a time where it's very important to have your people... Um, like the people who represent your company truly represent your company, you know? So, cause nowadays mm-hmm. in the information of sharing and everything, uh, in the age of information and sharing, I think that we do try to associate that person with the brand, you know? Yeah, totally. So, and when you see like Bill Trennan, nothing against him, great guy, you know, comes across well, but when he gets on stage to talk about a new game, I feel like he's speaking to like a. You mean? Do you mean Jack crowd. Trenton? You said Bill Trenton. Don't know who that is. No, Bill. Bill Trenton. Oh, the, I thought, I thought you said guy. Trenton. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, the guy who's always translating for Miyamoto, and he's the one yeah, who yeah. kind of introduces mm-hmm. a lot of the big new games. He, like, he's a great guy, but I, I feel like he, his cadence, his, his word choice, it's not the let's go out and dominate this game space. It's more like we've created this super fun Yoshi experience and you're going to get to play with yarn in the palms of your hand. Like, I but I think that's Nintendo, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I mean. It's like, I don't think that, like, look, at the end of the day, I'm sure they, when they're in business meetings, they do think like, okay, how can we get a bigger share of the pie and how can we right. get back out to the top but i just don't think that culturally that's how that company is run i don't think that they have this like mentality of like an activision or an ea where it's like very yeah. cutthroat and kind of like you know what like we got to sell this i don't care what the public's saying but numbers are speaking louder than words and we, we yeah. see that we can make a ton of cash here our profit margins are huge in this category push this go 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 yeah I, so maybe i don't maybe think they think that, that we... way we acknowledge them for sticking to their – whatever their values or whatever their sort of company line that they've established for, for themselves is. Perhaps they do hold to that, and perhaps they're more happy to be 
very loyal to that and, and what they believe in versus just going and getting more dollars. And either way, I'm very curious to know what everybody listening has to think, whether it's about VR, whether it's about the future of Nintendo, one console, a billion consoles. Let us know in the comments below. We'll pull some uh, of the more interesting ones and, and add those in next week. Um, Speaking Before we get into what we've been playing, I, I want to say two things. <laughs> Uh, yeah. One, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. I think it's I think it would be a disservice for us to not mention it. We started with five people. There's three of us now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not by, sure. By I'm the not end sure of the, the podcast, we're gonna have one person. It'll I'm be, not sure if the UK and it won't even be nuked. Zach. <laughs> a zombie apocalypse. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right. So yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, you know, yeah, the, that's still Mageddon was happening on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, okay. So I wanted to point that out. The other thing, I'm yes. sorry, I'm not putting Nintendo footage in the background. So whatever is up apologies it's because of me so like don't blame zach or anything but uh nintendo's being very fickle with their copyright stuff right now so i'm not taking any like any chances with, with you know mine or yeah. zach's channel so exactly for sure fair fair enough and, and good to let everybody know um we should also let them know what we've been playing it's something that is is kind of on everybody's radar right now is dying light um, except big mine release. apparently because I have except, except, <laughs> except yours. Uh, they did some weird shuffling before launch where it's coming out digitally mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. in Europe and, and some other places, but not physically for another month. They made their pre-order bonus open to everyone. That all aside, Gabe, like game-wise, how do you think this ranks in, in comparison to the other big titles we've seen lately? By lately? What do you mean? <laughs> okay, yeah, well... Just, just as a, as a, the game of January. Yeah, yeah. Let's just it's say a that. strong one. I, I, I like it a lot. I think I might like it a little bit mm. more than you. Um, mm. I don't know how, how far are you into it. Um, I've only played through the preview um, build, so that's like the first two and a half, three hours ish. Um, I think that that's super strong. I guess my concern it, it, it and, keeps and... going. Like, it, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, you're asking for like a, a huge variety, maybe in in what you're doing, and it's probably not there. Um, you're not gonna go to like a snow mountain or anything like that because you said, <laughs> hey, like you know, is it only this city? I mean, for the most part, but the story yeah. that they're telling is compelling enough to where I think people who enjoy it. The combat is really really fun. Um, next what what is um, pardon for interrupting, but like since I haven't played it yet. Um, what is the story? Is it more um, Sunset Overdrive in terms of tone? No. Like very no. over the top? Or is it like Walking Dead, very serious, grounded kind of it, it, thing? It's serious. It's not Walking Dead. Walking Dead is trash. Okay. Um, I, I hate the Walking Dead, the TV show. I, I, oh, jeez. Terrible. Read the comics. Tell us no, I love the cool. comics. The, the the show is terrible, though. Um it, it's, But it's, in terms of tone, yeah, where no, is it? Is it's, it somewhere it's closer, in between there? Yeah, it's... it's it's closer to Walking Dead. It's in between, but closer. To, like, it, it, not every. I I haven't finished the game. I've played maybe a couple hours more than Zach. It's not super dire. Like, you can get bit and you'll be fine. Like, you're not going to instantly die. You can get a shot of Antizen and, you know, just keep on living. But that's sort of uh, part of what is structuring the story so far. The fact that people are getting bit, people are dying, people are turning to zombies, and there's a vaccine. It's not a cure. But if you get injected every other day or whatever the case is, you're, you're you're still alive. So the fact that that thing is in short supply, there's airdrops that that are uh, being sent, and you're supposed to go get them for your faction of people that really really need them because nobody wants to turn into zombies. So mm -hmm. and there's a group that's um, getting all the airdrops, competing against, yeah, yeah, you. killing anyone okay. trying to get close to them, not to use the the not to use them for themselves, but to sell them at the higher price. So so. So is there anything that, like, from what I understand, at least to me, the, the big pitch with this game was the whole night and day cycle. That was kind of like what they were touting as a big thing, right? Yeah, Zach, have you had a night cycle? I Man, know. that's freaking intense. I was in a cuss. Um, <laughs> you get chased by me. You get chased by a volatile. And mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there there's so many of them. It, it kind of adds like a stealth element because there's a lot of them around you. And on the mini map, you can see... Um, the direction that they're looking at. Like, there's a little cone that says, okay, the Volatiles can see everything here. So your objective is to try to get somewhere safe for the night because they're going to kill you unless you're, like, crazy high level, mm -hmm. which I'm not. The very first night experience I had, I was out there um, in the middle of getting... And does it punish you when you die? Like, is there... It, like, it take, or is it, it just it, basically just go back to the no last checkpoint? You lose, like, money or experience. One of those, I forget which one. But you lose... I think it's Yeah, you, you lose money then. That's how you get punished. Mm -hmm. And, but the ca and then ca the, cash is, is cash very significant? It's important because you, weapons break very, very quickly in this game. 
and mm-hmm. you need to buy the ex- repairs. Yeah, sorry, I was burping. Um, you got to buy the equipment you need to repair it. You also probably want to buy stronger weapons. You also probably mm-hmm. want to buy med kits. You can make med kits by stuff that you find out there and such, but money is pretty important. I think there's two, or well, I think there's a question that the audience really wants to know, and then a question I really want to know, and, and just it makes more is sense. Is it made by Nintendo? <laughs> no, it makes more sense for me to ask mine first, which is where does this game fall? I guess from the preview, I, I still don't have a good grasp on. Is this Far Cry, big open world with lots of missions? Is this linear? I heard that it's, very it's not linear. Ubisoft. It feels like it was made by Ubisoft. That's what I've. But been is hearing. there a lot to do? Like a Ubisoft there's, game, like a lot of side there, there, markers and there, there's, there's a lot of towers and stuff. I heard. <laughs> no, no, no towers. Um, there's side. There, you're climbing stuff, but you know, there's no crazy towers. There's side missions, but it's not. You're not gonna have at least me not yet. I haven't had like five side quests that I you know I'm keeping track of. At any one time, I've had two, maybe three, and you. So it's more linear. Well, then. no, it's not linear. Open world. Yeah, op- linear? <laughs> open world because you don't. <laughs> linear means that you have one set way of getting through this. You really. But it's not. It's not. It's open by world linear. Like Far Cry Four. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's not like Far Cry Four with you know you can do the uh, you know Golden Path mission. You can do the Sabal mission. You can do some races. It's not like that. Th- there's no like little. There's no activities. not a lot of side quests. No, there's side quests. There's no side um, activities. Like there. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, like you're not gonna go have fun. And nothing organic happens, right? There's no like all of a sudden a woman runs out of a building and you have to go. Well, yeah, her. the survivors. Like you could be like, let's say you're going to your waypoint, right, for the next mission. Uh, a, a blue okay. one appears, so it's like a bit oh, like Dead Rising. Yeah, a, a blue a blue okay. one appears. Says, okay, look, there's a survivor over here, over here being attacked. Go save them. You go save them. They either give you most of the time it's money, but they can give you other stuff too. So yeah, okay. there, there's things to do. It's just don't expect this isn't GTA. This isn't Far Cry Four. Yeah, but it's also mm-hmm. not uh, Uncharted. So it's. But um, how how is this game different in terms of just being like a zombie game? Because I mean, of course we're gonna. There's the obvious question: Aren't we oversaturated on zombie titles? Because you know we just had like H one Z one day. Like there, it seems like every other week we get like a new zombie themed game. But what does this one do like different? Is it the day and night cycle? Like uh, is that th- really that the that along element? with that and the parkour? The parkour getting around the city is like super fun. Um, Mm-hmm. Zach, yeah. Zach's played is it. it Mirror's Edge? Yeah, sort of. Level? Sort of, yeah. It's it's a, it's like if Faith gained about 75 pounds. Like, that is how I... <laughs> you're, how you're, I like ca- you're carrying a whole bunch of stuff with you. You have all your weapons and... and... Well, like, there's a, a thing where instead of how Faith would kind of effortlessly, you tapped a vault over a ledge, like, this guy kind of, like, hangs and, like, pulls himself up. Mm-hmm. So it's not the same speed sense. Um, but just to interject, because it, it just piggybacks off of Max's question and, and is what I think people want to know. This is the Dead Island developer. And they are not making Dead Island 2. So is Dying Light just Dead Island 2 with a different face? Or, or how how do those, that comparison I, I, factor I don't in? think it, it's too different. Like, tonally, it's different. This isn't Dead Island. Dead Island is a little bit more playful. Yeah, Dead Island was more Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's more like, playful. Mechanically, like, like the combat, the repairs, the weapons, the, well, the weapons, um, the, know, adding electricity or Yeah, weapon. but the weapons so far haven't been as crazy. Yes, you can add electricity and stuff. But, like, there isn't anything crazy. Like, there isn't Dead Island, like... I see it sort of like a spiritual successor. Like, you can tell it's made made by the same people, but mm-hmm. the zombies in this one are actually a lot more problematic than they are in other zombie so games. They, they take AI a lot is of hits. smarter. Well, they yeah, take a like lot you, of hits. and you get mm-hmm. tired very quickly. You swing four times, you're out of stamina. You got to back up a little bit. You might have a zombie coming at you from behind. Like the zombies actually so pose that's a threat. Interesting. Yeah, like so it sounds kind of like, um, like. Not quite at the level of H one Z one or DayZ in terms of inventory management and being super mm-hmm. careful. You know, no, not at it all. It doesn't seem like it requires that level. No, but it seems like it does borrow some of those elements, right? Like of you do have to like think ahead, like okay, how are we going to survive for the night? Um, how like what are the amount of weapons that I'm going to take? Which weapons am I going to use in this fight? How many times am I going to swing it? Yeah, for sure. Um, another big thing, um, especially early on. I mean, we're still in the early stages of the game. You probably want to find everything you need to add those elemental, um, um, gosh, I, I keep like the elemental. It's like the supplement yeah, yeah. the weapon to strengthen it yeah, with electricity so, or so, fire. Oh, power ups. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a mm-hmm. weapon that you really, really like, you want to mm-hmm. go find, um, it's two batteries and like an electrical cord stuff. That's like pretty rare. You got to go find it. Then you put the power up to this one weapon and then that becomes your favorite weapon. So then after that that thing's going to break down. So then you're going to be tasked with constantly finding what you need to repair it because you can't just repair it automatically. You need to have 
the resources to do it. So it it, it definitely sure. become you really want to have like a really strong weapon with you at all mm-hmm. times. But then you're also going to that's good. You, I I like that element as long as it doesn't become like it, it, it's not annoying. Like it it doesn't. Well, uh, I mean, did they get from, that time right? Because you know, from it's my so experience important. with the game, like three hours. What I loved was the parkour, the movement, and I I really like the setup. Like Gabe was saying, the story is pretty. They start off in this big tower. I don't know. It has like a nice intro and kind of feels very. Uh, it almost feels like you're gonna walk into a Naughty Dog game or something like Ooh, that. Cool. Because well, because it, it just sets it up very nicely. You, you drop in, you airdrop into this area, you get saved by um, a couple other survivors, taken to this tower. You're meeting all the people in the tower, um, kind of learning about them. Then there's you have to go down to a dark floor and, and salvage some equipment. I, like it's a good setup. My my issue with it is that I feel, and this could just be me and, and Gabe, you know, curious how you feel, is like, okay, instead of doing the Dead Island crazy weapons and, you know, kind of more of a goofy gag-filled storyline adventure, they instead replace that with boring weapons and this arbitrary difficulty that is a smaller stamina meter and quicker depleting weapons. And, like, I, if it was for survivability in the sense it was, like, Dark Souls, like, roguelike-esque where you, you got punished in some serious way maybe but to me it felt like the zombies have more health i have less stamina and the only reason is because like they didn't have time to do something well, more well okay um the the thing that you're missing from there is there's upgrades uh there's four skill trees uh one of them is the your combat one of them is your agility i forget what the other two are uh one of them is a crafting um you can upgrade your abilities, right? So the kick that the kick right. that you just have, like to start off with, once you get upgrades for it, once you do that kick, you stun the enemies. You like an X-ray mode starts, and they're like see through. You see their bones. So once that happens, right. you can take a zombie down in like two hits. Like he he that arbitrary feeling of like your stamina it goes away because you're powering up your you hit uh, harder or whatever with certain type of weapons. You can stun these enemies. So the upgrades definitely change that. Like, it's not... There's not this false difficulty the entire way through. I think you just haven't reached that point yet. So, but yeah. but do they happen, like... You know, like, sometimes we don't even, like, think of elements like this. But, like, do they happen quickly enough to where I'm not going to feel... Because if Zach says he's two hours in and he hasn't felt it... Well, that's what I was going to say. That's is, like, the issue. I do did, they happen I fast up, enough to where you, level you feel up your significance? Agility? And you level up your strength. Well, I mean, there's multiple trees, but basically, you're, when you run and do cool parkour, parkour moves, you gain XP into that side um, of the tree. And when you do like fighting and kill zombies, you gain XP in that side. And I felt like getting to level four or five on each side, that the improvements I had were basically things that I should have had at the start. For example, I unlocked a slide um, for my character, mm-hmm. I unlocked um, a stun kick, I unlocked. Like, things that you would normally have in, in a game of this nature, like, or I unlock the ability to carry more throwables. Uh, obviously, those are normal level ups, but I don't know where the game goes in hour six, seven, eight, but I didn't get the sense that all of a sudden it's going to, you know, you're going to get the kind of things that would turn the tides of this, this game. It felt more like little stat increases or little extras that so you felt like the I, upgrades weren't significant enough i felt like it was gating i mean also i mean remember because they didn't remember have this is to, early to upgrades do. so they're not gonna they're yeah. not gonna drastically change it like in the first couple hours um and we got the review copy late zach had problems with his ps4 so he wasn't able to record so we haven't finished well it. i think everybody got their copies like monday night and they claim they claim on twitter that it had nothing to do with not wanting reviews. Which yeah. I, thought was I mean, like, in the game. Well, I don't know. The reviews have begun. The game's coming good. out. The game's some good. of them. And it's been reviewing pretty well. Like, so, I, so you think it was that they just couldn't get copies to people? I, mean, I don't know. Because the, the issue is, I remember, who was it? I think Rad Brad started his walkthrough like months ago. Well, we, we, or we, we did. It feels like it. We did too, but that was a preview build. We had that build months ago. So we had the first, what, so, three hours of the game for? Now that you started playing it, is it different? No, no, no. Well, no. That, that beginning section is still that beginning section. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. But so why don't they? Why didn't they ship out copies then? I can understand. Well, I, I, I don't know. Like, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it is an issue of what you pointed out that the game doesn't get that much different. Like you know, in hour ten, not eleven, twelve, it's hour one, two, and three. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it's unfair of us to say anything like that since we haven't been there ourselves. Exactly. All, yeah, all, all this is uh, yeah, it's speculation. Um, yeah, maybe, absolutely. but it's been reviewing well. I know that. I know I've been having fun. Uh, Zach, what I wanted to ask you is. Um, 
the story. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I want to ask a specific question, but then I also don't want to spoil sure. the game. So, uh, quick spoilers. Like, sorry, um, fast forward like thirty seconds. Um, have you? Uh, do you mind? By the way, Blitz, I forgot to ask you. No, 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 I'm okay. Okay, have you gotten to the point where? You get to that second airdrop and you find the antizen and and, and yeah. the powers that be tell you to yep. destroy it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. To me, yep. that's yep. super interesting. Like, what's gonna happen from there? Oh, I think that was super great, and I think I said in in some of my videos that this is the best start to a game that I've played in in a long time. I think my concern upon hearing some later impressions, um, realizing that the map is the map, and that the zombies are kind of the zombies that they there's different zombies built by the way. Well. Yeah, and in in this I guess I guess what I mean more is the visual variety isn't isn't I as feel much like, as you would want. I feel like they have a great first 20% of a game and then I feel like it needs to take a step in some direction and my concern and and it kind of has been echoed by some people who I read on NeoGaf and different things. Granted, no no final takes here or anything. I'll yeah, play of more course. of it. But but my kind of thinking is that it stays that way for 10 to 15 hours. Well, and you you haven't the experienced thing. a night cycle, and you're right there. You're about to do it, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. When you're first getting chased by those volatiles, that is super tense. And, and you know, people say that games are intense sometimes, and, and they're saying it in a, in a way that it is sort of not real. Played down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But this was literally, I, I needed to get from one point to another in the middle of the night with all these zombies. There's a lot of zombies to begin with. But then I have like these like five or six volatiles chasing me. Yeah, that sounds they, fun. They like, are that sounds they're really, really super cool. quick. They are super quick. And what I think that sounds great. yeah, and yeah, that sounds really interesting. I died. But is it is it have you done it more than once? No, it happens all the time. But I've only had to do it once because I've only been out. Okay. I wonder if it gets any more interesting later on, or if it's the same. I know you can. I know you night. can kill a volatile. I mean, you can. Yeah. Eventually, so okay. I wonder was. I wonder, like, uh, in terms of, like, when you had to do it, was it, like, if the game said, like, you have to go out at night, did it give you, like, a reason to do it? Yes, that one time it's because, Good. yeah, that one yeah. time. So so I think that th- that would be important. Like, I think that uh, towards the latter half of the game, I'm wondering if there will be more, like, you know, a supply drop during the nighttime. Yeah. And you have to go out that, there and you let, have let's to. Let's be clear here. Like, this, you don't, you can't, like, go out at night and do side missions or go out in the day. Like, it's, it's scripted, no, right? No, no, you can be out at night. Uh, so, but I mean, like, can I stand there and not do my mission during the day and then wait till night? I think so, yeah. And then do I stuff? Think so. Because um, another thing that we haven't talked about, you get extra, um, you get more XP, more more abilities, like higher ability points or whatever for being out at night. Since the nighttime is more dangerous, you get compensation. Oh, that's cool. You get comp- I like yeah, that. Yeah, like there's compensation for you to. So it rewards risk. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. That's smart. I guess I just didn't get the sense that you could go out and do well, because there is really no side stuff. But like, imagine if it was like, "Hey, do this side thing where you have to kill, clear out this area." But instead, you could do it at night for more XP. You can. You can yes. do that. Um, what you can do, Zach, is when you're out there, right? Um, all those uh, safe houses, you can rest that one till it's like daytime or nighttime or whatever. Um, you can. So then you can go out and accomplish tasks at night. And as far as I can tell, yeah, I was running away from those volatiles, and I saw a safe house. I'm fairly certain I could have gone to it. I I didn't okay. do it, cool. so I'm not you know a hundred percent. But from what I saw, yes, you can still be out there at night. Do, and did you feel sorry? Did you feel like the the risk reward was there, like for both the risk and the reward? Like I, I know that that sounds <laughs> weird. Yeah. Um, but what I mean by that is like, um, like for example, a game that I haven't played, but I did find very interesting in terms of like uh, uh um, the way that it was set up. Going a bit on Nintendo is Zombie U. If you remember, yeah, I remember. in terms of Fantastic. where you would die and then you would have to play as a completely different character. Yeah. So it's yeah. like your risk reward was very, very high. You know, it's like, yeah, you could have, you know, maybe beat that zombie and then gotten something cool. But if you didn't, that's it. That character's dead and yeah. good luck, like, you know, next time, so to speak. So does it feel significant enough? Like when you take that risk, is it like does it get to the point that you're like, okay, I'm just going to always take the risk because I don't really lose that much. Well, I think losing money is pretty important. You can need that money. Like I said, if you want to buy... So it definitely hurts. It, it will... But like, I, I wish they would have done the Zombie U thing of dropping your backpack. Like, just like Zombie U did. Zombie U has you drop your backpack with all your gear. And then you, would you start out with a basic paddle. Yeah. yeah. And so if you want to go get maybe something sweet you found or you killed an entire horde and opened up this, you know, locked box and you got a bunch of grenades, you would have to fight back to your body. And that made you think about, man, maybe I better not, you know, jump down into that yeah. area that has seven 
poisonous zombies. That would have been cool. Here, if they did that, it was it would be a simple switch that I think would have greatly increased the intensity of the game. Yeah, because I, mean, I think that it sounds really cool. I'm just worried about the... The, the whole idea of like where I'll get to the point where I'll just be like, oh, I'm just going to take the risk because yeah. I just yeah. get um, way more <laughs> stuff than I lose. And, and to your whole risk versus reward thing, I don't know because as soon as they start, like they killed me once, the second time I'm like, nope, I am not even trying. So I didn't try. That is- all right. So, <laughs> but all right, that's cool then. So it almost sounds like it, the game is so intense that just and that, the, yeah. that feeling of being in panic, you just didn't even want to experience yeah. and, that and, and Yeah. And that portion, yes, super intense. During the day, you're Ooh. fine. But at, can you tell me? Go ahead. Why? Why? Can you think of the reason why the weapons break so quickly? Zombies have hard heads. I don't know. <laughs> isn't that just like complete frustration? Yeah, it, it and, seems and, like an and, arbitrary reason for you to uh, manage your inventory a little bit more, have the extra weapons on hand in case all, like, all of like, yours break. Max, we're talking. We're talking not like oh, twenty minutes of gameplay. We're talking like a minute. Well, I don't know about a minute, but what? A, 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 no, it's not a minute. If you're whacking a group of zombies, your weapon is going. Oh, to break. sure, 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 sure. Uh, a group, you're fighting a group, mm. a single I'll t- I'll group. I'll tell you this, you cannot get you it's cannot gone. get past four zombies with one weapon. No, yeah. So it's quick. Wow. Like, it's gone. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. But, you know, you don't only have the four slots. You also have your inventory that you... But when you power it up, does it become more efficient? Yes, for sure. And fixing, okay, and, and so... fixing it isn't that hard. You step back, you hold triangle for a little while if you're playing on a PS4 controller like I am, and it's fixed if you have the materials. Like, mm-hmm. I think my most interesting thing going forward is going to be to see how they balance the numbers game of does that extra you know durability you get really balance out to having to use it? Does Because, like, again, if you're building like a really cool weapon and it breaks super fast, now I have to go back and I have to... You know, if I'm out of repairs, mm-hmm. you can't get out of repairs for weapons. So then I would have to rebuild the weapon, go get the parts again, get the money. And does that cycle at some point balance out? Because early on it felt very much like, well, I would rather just use a weaker, you know, bed post that I find than take the time to go get this souped up weapon because it's going to break so fast anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah oh, as long as know. I'm wondering, the is there an element of difficulty um, that makes a difference there? Like, if you play on an easier difficulty, I don't, do the is, weapons last longer? There, I'm there is no difficulty. easier difficulty. It's, oh, there yeah, is no. no it's, just, it's just a default. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Because I think that would have been really cool if they did it like, you know, like easy is a much more arcade-like experience. Medium starts already becoming a little bit more like of what we have now. And then in the harder difficulty, they could have literally done the backpack thing from Zombie yeah. U. I, I, yeah, I, I never be... got asked by the game, like, hey, do you want to play this on a normal, easier, or hard? No. Like, I just got thrown in, and that's that's what it is. And it has another mm. aspect that, that um, I've played, like, four minutes of, so I can barely talk about it. I don't think Zach's touched it at all. You can play as a zombie. Um, and Ooh, and the and cool. the way you get to maneuver as a zombie it is super interesting. You you get to lunge yourself with it's either your I think it's your tongue, but it might be some like arms that stretch out. And maneuver uh, maneuvering as one of those is super interesting. You can do it a lot quicker. You have super high jumping and stuff. So w- w- wait, is that like a multiplayer mode? Yeah, or is that it, just it, a it, separate it, single player? That's a great question, Zach. Is it multiplayer? It's a separate thing. For, um, it's not the campaign. But so what, are are you then hunting like humans? Yes. Or what what is the Hmm, there is hunt- interesting. I played through the because t- there is there's co op through the um campaign. What do you call it? There's co op through the yeah, campaign. regular co op. Um, and there's there's also be the zombie mode, which is it's some sort of PvP mode. But I'm not. I don't know if you like jump into their games. I think that's what they were going for, but I'm not really sure. Well, no, it's I, it can't be that no, it, because it, it, the problem not. is that would make the game unbalanced. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's it's round based. Okay, yeah. so you know like. I, I again I really like the start here. I'm gonna play it and I, I hate to be, you know, negative Nostradamus here, but my sort of thought on this game, just from playing a bunch of different games and knowing the developer, is that it is a game that touches on a lot of different things. You've got parkour, you've got crafting, you've got inventory management, you've got day night cycle, you've got zombie be the zombie multiplayer, you have be the human multiplayer, you've got ability points, you've got like all this stuff, and none yeah. of them are really Polished. pushed. Mm-hmm. In the same way that you and I both, before we talked about this game, thought, Max, that it was like a Far Cry with like a billion things to do in the uh-huh. world, and it's not. Same with, like, I thought I'd have lots of crazy weapons like Dead Island, and, and not to say that it would fit this tone, but one of the fun things about Dead Island for as many problems that game had was you were always getting, like, a weapon that, w- you know, impressed you or, or blew you away, or like, whoa, that's, uh, now I'm firing poison darts out of this gigantic cannon, you know, whatever. It feels like it's like surface 
level touching on all these bullet points and then the depth is gone after uh, it, it's, a, but, it's a do go ahead yeah i i think the the key is like that's like this is kind of an issue i think a lot of times with games like this you know what i mean where you kind of try to be a jack of all trades master of none yeah. but then the problem is that all of those end up not coming together well mm-hmm. so uh, or you be it, a 20 dollar 3 hour game and be a 9 well, out of 10. Uh, yeah I mean, yeah so i i think that the issue here is like I guess do those elements come together well enough into one package? Right. The thing, you know? the thing is, um, this is not a short game by any means. Uh, playing a mm-hmm. few hours, I think uh, Zach, maybe where you're at, maybe you're done with like five percent of the story. Like it, it, it tells you what percentage you've completed. Like I've played maybe four or five hours. I'm like, I'm like six mm-hmm. percent. Like that's nothing. There is so yeah, much yeah. more, and I don't know what's out there. So. I mean, yeah, but the key is like again, I guess like look, when you're five hours into a game, you kind of get a vibe of the game. Yeah, yeah. You know what uh, I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't like that argument of when people make like you know with Final Fantasy, what was no, it? no, no, thirteen or something. Yeah, no, I, it's like <laughs> if you play forty five hours, no, then it gets really uh, good. And I'm it's not like, saying that because it's a really good already. I'm just saying, I, okay. I'm just saying it might build on it. Like, I, cool, I, I think cool. Zach agrees. Like, this isn't a bad game by any means. No, no, it's not bad. I just to to me, the impression I get is that it is a game that was aggressively fleshed in ways that almost like the Ubisoft design philosophy like more gameplay hours more gameplay hours like let's bloat this and and instead of condensing like imagine if they took it down and so those night encounters were scripted and there was a bunch of different cool chases mm-hmm. like you'd have that panic inducing moment in, in creative ways instead of this day night cycle that can happen can I, I don't know i mean there's there's pluses and minuses to everything yeah my biggest gripe with the game regardless of anything still though is the fact that in Dead Island, or a lot of zombie games, you're either dismembering the zombies, taking them down. The zombies here, you literally... I mean, Gabe, I don't know if you've progressed with your weapon arsenal, but I was hitting them, like, sometimes 30 times. Yeah, no, not 30, but... A 20. I mean, it... If you take like a basic like wooden board, I feel like you're just slapping the zombie over. I don't and know. Over and I don't know. I I hit, down, I hit them five times. Up. Five and they're done. It, I here's what happens. I I attack the hell out of him. And my stamina mm-hmm. runs out. I back up one more hit. They're done. And they don't fall down and stand back no, up. When they're down, I kick them and hit them in the head. Like you can crush. But there's no, there's no crush. There's no. Yeah, you kill. crush their head in. Yeah. You have. Is that an ability that you no. unlock? Like I, when they're on the floor, I aim for the head. I hit them twice in the head. The first time it like bashes. But does it go into an animation like no, a, no, like no, a no, no, crush? no, okay, no, no animation? Okay, but right. by the you hit them twice on the head while they're on the floor, they're done. Their head explodes. Maybe maybe my version was goofed up, or maybe I just am goofy. But and and, and, I mean, and if you go and watch my videos. There's times where I'm kicking literally. 30, oh well, 40 ki- times. yeah, kicking. Mm. Yes, don't be kicking them. Well, even on the ground, though. I'm no, saying. no, yeah, no. That kicking is not the way to do it. You have to hit them with your weapons. And uh, that first like mini boss that we fight, where he has that giant yeah. thing, that's a one hit kill weapon right there. If you can somehow keep mm-hmm. that around and keep fixing it, that kills them in one hit every time. Cool. Yeah. Really interesting. So, so I think we yeah, it, it, it does sound like it has an interesting uh, inventory management system. Like that certainly is like that, and the day and night cycle is the things that yeah. to me seem interesting. And, and I'm di- and, and I'm digging the story. The, the story is great uh, so far. Um, just the cool. the fact that you have like this moral conundrum: Are you going to listen to whoever's telling you what to do, or are you going to? Can you? Do no, that, no, though? you have no choice. No, not so okay. far. But I'm saying like, just I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it, it's yeah. going to get touched upon. Like I, I, so, yeah. you felt like this warrants a full price game? Oh yeah, I guess kind of oh, cycling abs- back absolutely. to what we talked about last week. This is a full price release, and it warrants yeah, I, I, paying sixty dollars for it. I have no clue why you would think otherwise. The multiplayer oh. I, we haven't touched the multiplayer, so but it's there. Well, I think I think if it stays at the surface level depth in all the different aspects, then I would be concerned. I mean, if it does dive deeper, and I, I wonder also if okay, Gabe, you know. You've got some other games, so last question. But if this game came out in November, would it have any hype? Not. I mean, I mean, if it was surrounded by, uh, you know, Call of Duty, Uncharted, whatever Nintendo puts out, would would Dying Light? Is it benefiting from being the lone yeah, yeah. AAA game? Yeah, absolutely. Like this isn't. Uh, Warner Brothers is publishing. Techland's making it. Like it's not AAA. It's double A. I don't think it could hang mm-hmm. in there with like Uncharted and, and Zelda or whatever. But 
Or even just a busy time. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's a great mid-tier game. Like, people complain yeah. about the mid-tier of video games evaporating and not being a thing anymore. This is a great example of one, and they should support it. Um, to me, this um completely different. But would it have been then better for it to be a $40 game? Well, no. The quality's there. The, the, um, the playtime is there. I don't know why you would, like... I mean, Max, I'm on your side. Just if you condense this down to, like, a six, seven-hour game and... and expedite those cycles of, of leveling up and condense down sort of the lack of variety, I think you build a stronger package. And it seems like chasing that $60 price point, this is something I was thinking about between cast, is like companies are chasing that $60 price point, and I think they do things to their games that are in disservice to them just to bloat out either time, feature set, whereas if they were condensed down and there was a viable $30, $40 yeah. slot to, to slide um, your game but into... Then- could be so much but, yeah the thing about that though is public perception i agree with you i oh, i agree sure. with you like maybe this maybe a eight hour version of this would be a stronger game but mm-hmm. then you got to charge a 40 dollars, and then the public perception of something that's like 40 compared to 60 i you know the company isn't going to take the risk on that but yeah. and, and like i said i think we're prejudging it a little bit based off what we've played it, it, it could sure. be great the whole way through. We don't know. Now, we're going to keep yeah. playing it. Hopefully, we touch. Yeah, I mean, from what it sounds like, I mean, uh, like, again, I've not played it, but this sounds like a strong, like, you know, 7.5, 8 out of 10 kind of game. Like, you know, where it's just a solid experience, yeah. top to bottom. And I think it's reviewing better than that right now. Um, so, I don't know where all that's going to fall. I know even a lot of company uh, Polygon had to, um, Arthur Geese went and found his own copy by his own means because they didn't send review copy to anyone. So IGN strange. has a review in progress going right now. Like, well, w- when the chips are all down and the game's been out for a few weeks, I think this this review is in the eights. Um, and, and yeah, yeah and one thing one thing we didn't point out at all, and Gabe, I don't know if you agree with me, but I think the game is pretty dang gorgeous. Oh my god, like, it's a good looking, yeah. it's a good it's looking beautiful. Game. And people have been having issues with the PC version. I'm playing on PC. I've had zero issues. Um, it, it has to do with, with, with a certain slider that if you mess with as far as the, the graphics stuff, I'm not messing with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Scott uh, pointed out, so for those of you that are watching, yeah. I mean listening, uh, it's the uh, render distance or something uh, to- he said, Total, right? Total Biscuit had said uh, that it was something else. Uh, it's it's It has to do with the render distance because of the draw distance. And uh, there, there's one more slider that a Total Biscuit, like SLI, it's like two, like T, like, you know, the Titans. Awesome. So there you go. Le- check out Total Biscuits. Yeah, check out his advice. Don't, that don't touch if your. If you want to optimize. Yeah, it. like yeah. he he ran SLI Titans, and if he messed with this one slider, his frame rate got cut in half. So uh, whatever wow. the game optimized it with, that's what I went with. It looks pretty. It looks very very pretty. Um, and yeah, I'm happy with it so far. Cool. Cool. Sweet. We'll touch back on that for sure next week. Blitz, have you been playing anything this past week? I'm just you know playing everything that I'm playing on the channel, and then okay. I've been. I, I was going to play uh, Resident Evil, but I never got around to it. I have it mm-hmm. downloaded now on Steam. I bought it. Um, yeah, you definitely, but, yeah, you definitely got to let us know what you think about that. I'm super curious as to what you think. Yeah. You got, you got some time because we don't have another well, big evolve. game really. Yeah. Well, Evolve. Yeah, that's the next see, one. This, I'm shooting my own self in the foot with that because we talk about how like betas and access makes games seem like they're not even... Come yeah. out. We had some interesting comments on that that we'll get to shortly. Cool. But um, Life is Strange comes out Friday, and um, I'm, I'm going to play. Hopefully, Zach plays it. I know it's not very long. It's a, um, it's episodic, I believe. I'm very interested. Be it be a teen girl in, in high school. It sounds like a unique. Yeah, one. It's, <laughs> it's something I've never done. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's gotta, for sure. See what that Wait. life is like. Yep. All right, that was sorry about that. I, I started screaming. Uh, it's because I played something on my headphones. I was like, whoa. <laughs> oh. No problem. We got the order coming out February twentieth. Um, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse comes out February 20th. It's kind of like, because of the Witcher and Batman delays, it feels like the first quarter of 2015 got a lot slower than it, Mar- it Mar- could March have been. Is, March is busy, delayed. right? Yeah, yeah March, March is going to be insane. And what what else is March have? Here, March um, has here hold on. I'll look. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. There was some... So there, busy! Yeah, no, no, there were, there were some big no, games I know, coming I know. out. I just don't remember. Wait, Order? Is that coming out? That's February. Yeah, that's, that's February. February. Here, I'm pulling up a calendar already. Um, but um, are you going to give me a chance right. to do some Grim Fandangle talk? Go I ahead. I will. First, first, let me quickly oh. mention that I've been playing The Binding of Isaac Rebirth a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a game that it kind of semi-recently came to PS4 and Vita. Um, and it is one of the rare indie games for me that I feel is just brilliant. It's beautifully designed. It has its own style. It doesn't feel like it's trying too hard to, to do any one thing or to spread some message or... Yeah. 
it, it just it's just it's a very, games game. Yeah, it's very yeah. mechanical. I heard sound. that it, it's basically kind of like on the level of like Spelunky, you know, in terms of yeah, being I, very. I like this better than Spelunky because mm-hmm. it's less. It's very punishing, but to me, it feels more fair. A lot happens in Spelunky where I'm like, I don't know. Well, I do know why I died, but it, it's like I got shot by an arrow in the, the forest because it's dark and I can't see. Whereas Binding of Isaac, like, I was able to make it through and, quote, beat the first part of the game. And then I had my eyes opened up by other people on Twitter that apparently you have to do all this crazy stuff, unlock all these different things, beat bosses certain ways to open up more levels. And, like, man, the early look at the game compared to what it really is underneath is, like, you know, one of those tiny weeds that beneath is has this whole root system because if you get into that game and involved in it's like its own community almost. Sort of like yeah. Dark Souls where there's so many different elements going on. And it does obviously share the roguelike element from Dark Souls. And I find myself loving those games primarily because they push me to make choices in ways that a non-roguelike game never really does. Even in Dying Light, like, sure, losing money sucks, but... Does it suck enough that I will, won't get careless? If you're playing Dark Souls, Binding of Isaac, I feel like you're so... Yeah, ev- to me, that's every, an extreme immersion. Every, yeah, every hit feels like uh, it's taken a part of you. Yeah, you you got to restart yeah. if you get hit early. <laughs> and so like that that aspect just glues me to the screen and to the, to the game so much more, even if you are being a little boy who's abused by his mom stuck in the basement, like goofy exterior, but like real hardcore interior of gameplay yeah. well, so i'm sure lots of people played that yeah. over the years but what, what i love about the game is how each run can be so different than the last mm-hmm. it, it's great like northern oh, yeah. like sometimes i just sit there and watch like northern lion like uh, he's like super good at covering that game he has made over a thousand episodes of of uh, uh I, I isaac insane. videos in some fashion so it's cr- one thousand yeah, yeah. It, is it um because i played the original binding of isaac uh-huh. uh is it very different or is it They've, a remake kind of thing it's it's more more of like a polished extension. They've added a bunch of weapons, added a bunch of items, co-op. added a bunch of bosses. Co-op and then the graphical style, like it's not like oh an HD upgrade, but it definitely yeah. this looks is the same game. Like yeah, it, it's not a sequel. Yeah. It's like an expansion yeah. pack, more or less. Yeah, because I remember the last game that I got like addicted to at this kind of level was uh, if you ever played Rogue Legacy. Love that game. Mm-hmm. I have. Yeah. Freaking uh-huh. awesome. Yeah. So I, I really, really, really like that was the last game because I don't know. I tried Binding of Isaac, and for some reason I don't know. Like I, I saw the gameplay and everything. It was awesome. Uh, Did you play it on PC? Yeah, I played it. on I think it might gel with you more on PS4 because I had the same, the same conundrum where i was like i like this but it's not clicking but on controller especially like the shooting aspect of it just mm-hmm. feels way more, more natural. natural interesting yeah okay yeah I, I like I the fact that these games rogue legacy binding of isaac you know you you have 15 minutes to spare you can get a good solid experience and you don't have to like sit down for your you know four hour dragon age inquisition session yeah. or something yep fair enough all right mr gabe take it away what? with <laughs> a little bit of grim fandango uh, talk uh, i uh, zach's never played it have you no, I have not. I did not play the original. This is the uh, remastered yeah. version, right? Yeah, it's not super remastered, but yeah. Um, I just wanted to... Is it more of a port then? Yeah. No, well, no it, the... it's remastered. The, I think the... Is this the one that Sony is doing? Like, Are they doing this together, I think? Right? Uh, sort of. It's on PC. I'm playing it on PC. Um, it's oh, also on, v- okay. on Vita and PS4 exclusively. I do not believe it's coming yeah, to Xbox at all. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Sony has a hand in somewhere. Um, it's a super fun adventure game. Everybody knows what Grand Fandango is. The developer commentary is a super fun thing that I think more games should do. Been having a blast with that, and uh, yeah, um, I didn't. I don't want to take up. So how does that work? Uh, give us a bit of a what, what? What does that mean? Is that like movie commentary where yeah. they just talk over? The... Yeah, exactly. Um, they're... as you're playing through the game. Yes, there's a button that you oh, press. That's yeah, cool. there's a button that you press for developer commentary, and once you're doing certain uh, things, like you have Tim Schafer and everybody mm-hmm. else that worked on the game chime in and say like, "Hey, this is why we did this. This is a limitation." That is really neat. Yeah, this is yeah, a... that's a good idea. It's... Telltale should do that for like game of the year, like whenever they release like their like you know with the whole episodes together. Yeah, they should totally have a feature like that. That'd be really cool to see like uh, i mean of course that only works with like linear games but still yeah it was something i thought was really cool in um left for dead and half-life 2 uh the, the valve sort of injected their commentary there um and you i believe they had like clickable points where you could get like a tidbit based on that so you're still playing through the game is this do you click on stuff or is it just going um like the audio just constantly no going? no the audio is not constantly going no yeah um, you, yeah okay. you have to prompt it 
Uh, okay. The game, uh, it's quote unquote remastered, like you said, but visually, it's not super improved. You can stretch it out to sixteen by nine if you want, but that is not how the game is supposed to look. Um, it just looks stretched out, and you can tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm not playing it like that. I'll have I'll have my borders. It's okay. Um, mm-hmm. another thing I wanted to say: the story's super funny. Um, it has a noir vibe to it. And uh, having tons and tons of fun with it, just going back. And I, I had played maybe a little bit of it, like at a friend's house when I was a kid. But other than that, I had never played it. But uh, since then, I've gone back, played through, doing a walkthrough. Also doing another uh, playthrough with the commentary, and, and it's awesome. Um, I wish that the visual improvements were more significant. Because I've seen YouTube videos of how it used to look and how it looks now. Yes, it looks better, but a lot of the improvements are just like lighting. Now there's shadows on your character, stuff like that. But the cutscenes still look but ugly. But, it, it, I mean, the game has so much style, so much personality, and I think people will enjoy it. And it holds up in 2015. Like, it doesn't feel like, man, this is... No, no, no. Th- no, this holds up very well. And uh, it still has tank controls if you want them, but by default, it's point and click now, so... Um, and is it one of those, like, combine a like type things where you're like... You know, like Secret of Monkey Island or some of those games where, like, you're getting random things and mushing them together, or is it a different style? Sometimes. Like, the puzzles, I, I wish they had integrated a hint sub- uh, system, because some of these puzzles, man, uh-huh. I had to go check out a GameFAQs to how to do them. Oh, yeah. um, but cool. is Does it play well on the PC? Like, is this... Um... I, I'd rather play it on PC. I've played it on PC. Yeah? i played it on PC. Because I'm almost wondering, is this... Uh, I don't know why. I feel like this would be really fun on the Vita. Like I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it would be with that screen and everything. Yeah. I think it would be wor- really good. I have a code for the Vita. I might try it. Um, the the PC works best for me. Um, you can play with a PS4 controller, but just clicking, I can play with one hand for the for the most part. Um, you, you the only time you ever need the keyboard is to like select an item. You you press U. You can still do it all with one hand. So, um, I, I'm doing it with one hand while while I'm like having a drink, and it's a fun time. Cool. Very cool. March. Speaking of fun times, um, just to run down real fast, Resident Evil Revelations 2, Episode 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, um, or just 4, I guess. Uh, Mario Party 10. Oh, there we go. Mario Steam. Party 10, a.k.a. the Friendship Ender. G- G- a.k.a. they've ruined it the um, last couple. GTA uh, for PC is in March. Yeah, GTA PC. There we go. That's Blood- going to be a huge title. Bloodborne, um, Ori and the Blind Project- Forest Oh, for I'm Xbox. so excited for that. Yeah, that looks really interesting. Pro- Project and then Battlefield and Project Cars and Battlefield, yes. Yeah, Battlefield Hardline Project Cars seem like kind of the, the bigger ones. I mean, the biggest titles have kind of split out month by month. Whether you got the order in February, um, Evolve at the beginning, uh, Bloodborne in March, Mortal Kombat in April, Witcher in May, and Batman in June. I think that's good. I think that I, I hope that Batman sells so well that more games consider to spread out. Yeah, like, you know so, what I mean. Yeah. I, I don't like this cyclical, like you know. Uh, two periods of the year are just bombarded with titles, and then we have six months that are very kind of like, you know, blowing in the wind. I'm curious to see how E3 affects Arkham Knight, because, what was it, la- no, two years ago... Was it Uncharted that came out? Like, well, Last oh, no, of Us came out the Friday oh, right. yeah, after last E3, of but that was after E3, and I wonder if Batman is going to get completely buried coverage-wise... Because it's going to have one week. And and Infamous then... um, happened um, at E3. Like the game. What... S- is that second? No, 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 no. The one before. The first yeah, one? the first one. Like that happened. That happened okay. the week of E3. Like, I think it was not very favorable. Yeah. Uh, February is shaping up pretty nicely. We have Kirby. That's coming. We have the new 3DS. We have Majora's Mask and uh, Monster Hunter. Are you guys going to be picking that up? The new 3DS? Ah, man, I want one. I, I want the, the Majora's Mask one so, so bad. But they were sold out. I'm trying to find a pre-order somewhere. Still trying. You can go f- pay five hundred dollars on eBay. For uh, <laughs> uh, I think a friend of mine has an extra one pre-ordered. I'm gonna try to convince him to give it to me. There you go. There Are you, you go. getting one, Max? Um, I don't know. I, I I'm still like I got my 3ds XL and um, I'm I've recently been playing a, a bunch of Kirby Superstar Saga, which okay. is an older game, and right. then I've also been SNES playing remake. um, Fantasy uh, Life. I think it's called. Yeah, Fantasy mm-hmm. Life. Yeah. Uh, and that game is really, really cool. That's a, a, It's a hard game to come by nowadays. It seems like it's becoming more and more rare from what I heard. Uh, but that's a really, really cool game. And if you've never played it, you guys should check it out. But yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I'm having a hard time because it's like, what is... Have they announced anything that is going to be like exclusive to this new 3DS? Xenoblade for yeah. 3DS. Uh, Project Steam, maybe? W- it, w- mm. Was that... Codename... 
Codename Steam is not exclusive, but they're going to start integrating, and this is where I, I don't the know what amiibo, they're going to do. Right? It gets messy. Or whatever. Well, it's the Amiibo, but it's also Codename Steam. You can either can control the camera with the touchscreen or with the second little stick, and in, in a game where you're moving a guy around trying to line up shots, I think that's going to be a little awkward mm-hmm. um, with the stylus. So, I mean, is it necessary to upgrade? By no means at all, but I definitely will just because I'm... I like that stuff from Nintendo, and, and once it does again, have yeah. better 3D uh-huh. and more power or whatever. And once again, we all agree, terrible name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. They, they, I don't know what's happening there. Marketing although, uh, although department, new 3DS, like that's... I had this thought that maybe it was planned perfectly because a parent walks in and go, I want a new 3DS, and that's the one they give them in order to get <laughs> these other people's Yeah, household. there you go. It works. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. They're like, so they, Well, so they sell them the new one, the more expensive one, they get the... I mean... I guess a question I heard asked um, somewhere last week was, you know, by the end of this generation, so the, the 3DS is done, they're on to either their new combo system or whatever. Why did they not How? just call it the DS 2, 3, whatever? Like, why did Because it... it's not really evolving anything except a better processor and a little eraser nub yeah. that it's so Yeah, so but small, that's but... the same thing with the iPhones every year. Well, yeah. But I mean, and that's how, what they're trying to do here, anyway, right? For it's sure. Like, then just do, look at what works. Call it something yeah. next, yeah. I mean, but how many exclusive games? So like, we got Xenoblade Chronicles announced. Majora's Mask, even though it's being paired release date wise, it's not. You can play that on any 3DS. How many exclusive games do you think they release for this thing? In, let's say they have a new handheld in three years, two years. How many exclusive games do you think ever come out for the new 3DS only? I, I don't know. I think it depends on how the initial sales yeah. will go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that what... Because the problem is it'll be the same thing with the, like, 3DS and the DS, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, they... I, I think what they're going to do is they're going to release a Pokemon game and see how much that makes a difference, you know? Like, if... Oh, that would move consoles. Exactly. So, it's like, if, if, if it's if, if it's a big enough, you know, where, like, when Pokemon comes out, it warrants people to upgrade which there will be a good amount of people that will, then, of course, you've got enough of an install base now to pump out other games for it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Sounds I, good. I just so, don't think right now, though, to be honest, I think that with what they're coming out right away, I don't see, like, why would I want to upgrade? People, well, they don't yeah, even have pe- Xenoblade. Uh, yeah, people, so people do saying. love like, Xenoblade, it, though. It, 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 it's, it's just, I guess what you would think of is... Um, you would lit like if you don't have a 3ds. Yeah. Then you would just yeah. buy this. Yeah, this one is a perfect. You it just seems well weird that there's no one. no software with yeah, it. Yeah, so this, you're like, hey, this means. is gonna play exclusive games. Except, hold on, there aren't any yet. Yeah, it's just a, a bit of a strange decision. But I think it's more like what we've said before. I, I think they're trying to annualize the thing. I think they're gonna try to push to the point of where next year they're gonna come out with an upgraded version of this year's and. We'll see. We'll see if they can pull it off. But I, I think that's what they kind of want to go with is to try to yeah. do the iPhone or phone thing with the 3DS mo- uh, model. For sure. And there was just a uh, news story released as we've been oh my podcasting God. here. Live. Live breaking okay, news. Okay, reporting directly from <laughs> – wh- where are you? Indiana, I think? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, the uh, Apple is contracting with Samsung to develop their next chip. There, Ooh, there we go. Nice. That's sort of very interesting. Sort of very strange, interesting. In especially because we've heard that Samsung wants to buy BlackBerry. So and Apple and Samsung like seem to hate each other. In some, yeah, I mean <laughs> they'll they'll take the money though. Just like like oh, I yeah, mean Sony makes sure. a tiny cut off of Xbox One games because they use Blu-ray. Yeah, that's that is very true. And next week we'll be checking out more Dying Light. Um, Life is strange. Do you not have any um, mail? Uh, I do, and I'm going to get to that oh, before we my wrap bad. up here. A couple couple quick hits um, from people in the comments last week. Make sure to get your thoughts, questions, comments heard down there. Zach, why um, are you so negative? Also, why do you, not, also, why do you only uh, yeah. love Nintendo? Zach, Zach. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think he needs, to, to be fair, I think he needs a, a chance here to like explain himself. Because I don't think yeah, he's okay. negative. I think he's, I'll, just, I'll give a brief. he's just fair and tries to not just be like, Yo, everything is awesome. I'll give a brief answer to that, and that is, um, one, I, I do point out Nintendo's criticisms. As you, you heard in this podcast, I'm very concerned with some of the decisions they make, and I wish there were other directions they would go. I, I love them kind of unabashedly because they focus so much on mechanics and gameplay, and that's something that a lot of companies have gotten away from, especially in recent years. But in regards to negativity... Yeah, that's I, I read the big some, one. Not the Nintendo stuff. Yeah, it's the I, negative Nancy. I read somewhere, and I don't remember whose quote this was or even if it was a famous person, but it was saying that, you know, being negative sometimes isn't to bring something down but rather to bring it up and that you critique in order 
in, in hopes that you'll get something even greater because you want that to be really great. So when I cr critique Uncharted, it's not because I hate Naughty Dog, Drake, or the game itself. It's because I want it to be the best game it can be. And I think that we have a lot of voices, whether it's on YouTube or just in general, that are contributing to the hype machine, that are contributing to the pre-order sales, are contributing to the disappointment you as a gamer feel when you play a game that's been hyped to hell and back and then it's not what it was. I like to kind of look at things from both sides and sometimes play devil's advocate and say, huh, if I was thinking of this you know, from the negative side, so instead of in Dying Light saying, wow, they've got this cool system where things break so you have to be more careful with your weapons, to me I'm a little bit more like, well, why did they do that? Isn't that kind of cheating the player and arbitrarily extending you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I guess it's just a, a way to look at things on both sides more fairly, like you said, Max. And, and I do know I get critical of games, but usually it's because I want them to be the best that they can be. I wish every game was mind-blowingly great, and it can't be. But I think it's important for us, not only as gamers, but just as people, to always look at how things could improve. Otherwise, they won't. And if there's not people, you know, whether it's game developers reviewers, podcasters, talking about that sort of stuff, then you're going to get the broken Assassin's Creed every year with faces melting off and familiar gameplay. Yeah. See, and I think we understand that. It's just these the, the viewers, like, they don't have other conversations with you. Like, you say positive stuff about Uncharted, maybe not on the podcast, but, you know, yeah, like, oh, I mean, sure. it's... Yeah. Zach doesn't sit here and hate video games. Like, he plays video games for a living. Like, if he hated it, yeah. he probably wouldn't be doing it, you know... 20 hours um, every two days, or I wouldn't say 20 hours a day. That's probably not what that, that's probably too much, yeah. but you know, our life working me to yeah, death. Like our, our life is just inundated with games. And anytime we say something negative about one, it's not like, Oh, we hate this. I, I personally don't hate any companies. I don't know how you guys feel, but Oh no. Like, yeah, we love video games in in every way. And I think something else is like, you guys probably have experienced this as well over the years. Like, the more you play games, the more titles you have a chance to experience, the more the cracks begin to show, in a sense. Like, if, uh, and, and nothing against people that only choose to play one or two games a year, but if you're only playing Call of Duty every year, I feel like that is going to seem like a phenomenal game because it's your window into yeah. gaming. When you have this humongous ocean of indies and, and big and small and bad and good... Yeah. Like, it's overwhelming. Like... Yeah, it's I mean, well, it, and, and it's the same thing in the, in other in many other things too. Uh, too. Like, uh, imagine if like you go on vacation like once a year versus somebody who's like a world renowned traveler, oh, for sure. right? Like, you've yeah. seen so much stuff that an experience <laughs> to you is going to be a very different experience me, than me, to somebody who goes to one place a year. Me going to San so, Francisco this uh, this past time, I had never been on an airplane. I had never been in an airport. People hate airports. I was having a blast. I was sitting <laughs> yeah, there just eating cool. all the airport food I could. Like, I had never been on an airplane. So, for me, it was amazing. But I saw somebody sitting next to me. They're like, man, I hate flying. Like, it's so annoying. <laughs> so, that's exactly what it is. And I think the other thing to be said is that, you know, you may hate it if you already have bought the game or it's your favorite game. But a lot of times, whether it's me or any of these guys or, or, or anyone in general, critiquing a game you can use that as help to decide whether you want to, to purchase it or not. So it could be looked at as a, a positive to say, hey, I'm – or you or whoever are pinpointing some of the Dying Light's you know, lesser points so that you can have those in your mind when you decide if you're going to go drop your hard-earned money on that title or not. Um, Daniel, I thought, had a good point to that, and he said, what is the last game that you guys walked into Target or Walmart, saw the box art – Bought it because of that look and love the game. It feels like that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> I was, um, I was going to say when I was twelve. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, but I think that that's also like uh, the problem is that like that sounds very cynical. Like you know, it's like mm -hmm. nothing impresses us or nothing. But I think it's it's not that. I think it's just because like okay, I was excited to go buy Smash the day that it came out. You know, yeah. So I had I, I had the same giddy feeling of just like you know getting home, putting it into the Wii U, and playing it. So. I just think it's just nowadays you you can't like do that thing of like oh what is this you know because you if you are following gaming you've heard of everything that's yeah, on the so store much shelves closure. yeah, yeah. So yeah I, I mean and it's hard for us to get excited to just sit there and play because um, I'll speak for myself because I'm not you guys um, every time I play something it's for me to be recording or streaming I it's super rare that I sit there and just play something for fun I don't go to GameStop and 
buy a game and come home and play it for five hours. Like, no, I get a review code sometimes early and, you know, I'm recording for like an hour. Then I got to break that up into 20 minute segments. I got to edit the vocals. Got to, you know, if mm-hmm. I need to edit anything video wise, like it, it's not the same. Some, I mean, I, I would lie when I, if I were to say that some of the magic of just playing video games isn't gone for me now, but that's just mm-hmm. because we do it so, so much. But I think that's why it's also important to dedicate, like, you know, aside time to keep that passion for the thing alive, you know? Yeah, but some of it is I I literally sometimes, yeah, yeah, of course. But I literally force myself sometimes to be like, nope, like, just don't stream this, don't whatever. Uh, We'll literally, like play Mario Kart just like in we'll hop into a Skype call with like five or four people and we'll just play it for fun for like two hours you know yeah uh, and I think that that's important because that keeps that kind of like you know element of uh, magic about gaming and the passion alive so I, I I kind of like I get what you're saying but I also think it's very important to try to yeah I, make time for I, yeah that, which is hard don't get me wrong I, I've been doing I, that I a lot more important. lately like the past like yeah. the past week I've been playing um Towerfall Ascension every night with like my with my wife and my little brother and my little sister and my cousin. So we just hook four controllers up to the PC. We play Towerfall Ascension all night. I'm trying to be better about that. You know, conversations I've had with Zach, like, right, are you going to play this? I'm, I told him I might play it, but not for YouTube. Like, I'm trying to, I, I want to yeah. get some of that magic back. I want to be excited for bi- video games again. I think besides doing YouTube, it's also just the sharing age. Like, I remember, and my history could be wrong, so maybe not this specific game, but with Mario Sunshine getting Nintendo Power, seeing screenshots of that game, not really seeing any video, any gameplay, any impressions, any anything, just waiting for my copy to come in the mail so that when I opened it up, it was me experiencing that game completely fresh. When I played Bioshock 1, um, I found it early at a Toys R Us, and there wasn't a whole lot of coverage yet, and so it was a me kind of walking into this world... Un... I had no preconceived notion. I had no information, not many videos, not a voice saying it's an 8 or a 4. I just got to, to check it out for myself and, and walk into that game all alone. That's almost impossible now. You know, you, we see gameplay, we see trailers, we see reviews, walkthroughs. How, what, what, I guess even more than what game have you walked into and loved, what game have you gotten or, or even played and not known exactly how it was going to play, you know, or, or mostly how it was going to yeah. be? And there's there's very yeah, few of that. So absolutely, um, we had a lot of people from Australia. Ooh. <laughs> cool shout out to our Australian uh, listeners saying that they pay an exorbitant amount for games, and we should count our blessings that we only pay sixty dollars. Now there also is like a world economy thing going on that. Yeah, of course. Changes. Yeah, it has nothing yeah. to do with anything. You, <laughs> like you have to you have to account for like shipping, uh, currency. Uh, right. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, if taxes, for example, but we do feel for the people that do pay. Yeah, yeah of course. When I, dude, games. when I lived in Israel, we, uh, I had to pay. What was it? It was like 350 shekels, which divide that by three, so it's about like 125 dollars per game. Holy Ooh. crap! Yeah, yeah. That, so that's why I had like five games. Yeah, it makes things pretty crazy. Um, Sunray Z came in with a little input on sort of the pricing discussion. He said he feels like a full-price game should be the one that doesn't depend on other players or other services to work. So in the sense that Destiny can't be experienced fully um, without other players for the strikes or the raid, or online as well. Um, Evolve, Titanfall, etc. So then nothing's full Follow price. that same pattern. <laughs> well, he, he talked about games like oh. Red Dead Redemption, well, literally, um, Last of Uncharted, Us a... Mass Effect. A... Yeah, well, Last of Us is a multiplayer component. But I think, yeah, but you, I think in general, But let's be honest, game, I, I yeah. think that the single player is what you buy it for. And the single player, I mean, multiplayer is fun. I think it's really underrated. Mm-hmm. But I think that that game would have been, to me, my game of the year for that year, even without the multiplayer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, and, and I think... I think what he's saying here has a good point. It does have a lot this... of merit, absolutely. Because uh, I... I think that uh, I get the whole idea of that a lot of games nowadays will come out and kind of like have all these prerequisites for you to actually like enjoy the game or even not even enjoy, but function whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So uh, especially with people, like imagine if you have a game where let's say you don't have the greatest internet connection or whatever, and there's a day one patch that makes the game work. To begin with, right. I mean, I, I absolutely agree with that. I think that that's a, a very, very uh, uh, good point. But with that in mind, as we continue to go more and more digital, that's just going to be the way that things are. Yeah, yeah. and we got to adapt. It, well, and I don't think adapt. it's fair I, I, either because it's like 
okay, there's so many devices in the world that require something, whether they require – like I know this seems, seems completely crazy, but what if you have a house and you don't have enough plugs to plug in a blender? You've already used those, so, yeah. so the, should the blender be cheaper because it requires like an additional thing? I mean I, I think it's a good point in the sense of how we think about games, but I don't think they can price things based on that. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, yeah. how, going forward. Um, Rudra, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, says that – Basically just questioning, how come Microsoft and Sony are spending so much time and money trying to lock up an exclusive DLC, an exclusive hour of content, instead of utilizing more of their own franchises? For example, why hasn't Sony announced anything with God of War, Ratchet and Clank, um, Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter? They have these properties, and Nintendo seems to be the only company fully utilizing their yeah. stable of characters. Um, because stuff I guess, cheaper. And, well, not just yeah. that. Stuff because... just isn't ready. Like, do you want to see some concept art? Like, without they could probably show you some of that, but other than that, yeah, these but games I, aren't I think ready. it's also it's just cheaper. Like, look, fact is, those Call of Duty maps they sell more of those maps than most indie games sell. Yeah, yeah, like in their entire lifespan. So, if you're Microsoft, you look at that. It's like that's a no brainer. You know what I mean? Well, of, like, of course, I, I agree. But the, I'm saying, like, don't worry. It's not like Sony's only buying Destiny exclusivity and oh, yeah, forgetting about god of war yeah, yeah. god of war still coming yeah, yeah. it's just it's, not ready still oh yeah yeah uh, but I, I just think that at the end of the day when they look at it you know and it's like well you look if we buy this it's like we're gonna have to put marketing dollars behind it development costs um advertising all of that right whereas here it's like boom we just buy this little thing and then we just say exclusively on our console you can only play this or you'll play this 30 days early or whatever it is right. you know ha- so yeah it, having, it's just you're right <clears throat> having their logo at the end of the commercial i'm sorry i cut you off there but having their logo at the end of the commercial like that's a big deal it's huge yeah the, the fact that yeah. the playstation logo comes up after those dumb live action destiny commercials like for my yeah, and my, says, my, mind yeah, share alone that it's yeah it's worth the investment for them yeah of totally. course so yeah Wait. again it all comes back to the issue is like you know like we talked about the, to death this last week but at the end of the day it all comes back to numbers you know like they mm-hmm. there there's a reason why they're doing a lot of this stuff that we don't like you know it's like unless if you want to like let your money talk you know what i mean if you don't want to see assassin's creed don't buy it this year like just yep. let like let show them that you're not gonna pay full price for a game that's cyclical broken whatever it is uninspired whatever you think in your heart show them because it's the only at the end of the day that's what they look at it, it's a business it got it's got to make money and if something's making money they're going to keep doing it yep for sure we had two good comments on um, demos and betas um, jose said that he thought time demos would be a great way um, to do this instead of making them sort of uh you know oh you can play this level or this map just like 30 minutes of the game as much access as you can get, and then that would be sort of the enticer to play more. So a very limited time slot, um, and I'll get your thoughts on that in a second. The second person was um, Hank1812, who said that he really liked Halo's um, beta because they gave you such a, again, small amount of content, um, so you could get a taste of the graphics, the gameplay, but you really want to buy the game um, for more of that, whereas Evolve was like, hey, we want to show off our game and show you what it is, so they gave you a bunch of hunters, a bunch of monsters, all the maps and the modes, and there isn't as much allure or mystery. Basically that they were giving you the whole package versus just like a taste of the cooler bits of the package. The problem with the first thing he said is that then you got to download the whole game. Well, I mean, not really the whole game, but it's going to be a bigger download if you have free reign to do anything you want for like 30 minutes because with a demo, they're already sort of big. Sometimes they're like two gigs. I mean, the Evolve beta was what? Four twenty one. Yeah, 14. yeah, and that's because it's just that. But if you're doing like, okay, you have thirty minutes to do whatever you want, you got to download that whole thing. So it's yeah. gonna be a humongous yeah. download. It's like downloading the whole game, and for a demo, I don't think that's worth it. And we talked a lot about you know the the show versus telling of of hey, come play all of our game and see how much you love it and the cost benefit of that. I think it's just tricky, and I think there's so many factors. Are you a well known like Halo can honestly have. You know, shoot a gun as Master Chief in a shooting range, and that would probably build hype. But I don't think Evolve could do that. It would be laughed at. So it's like there's there's so many factors, and it, it seems like it's really hard to create a good uh, demo. People need beta. to take notes from Halo Five. That was like expertly done. Like it was a blast. It wasn't too much. I'm still really really excited for it, and it was a year ahead of time, so it's an actual beta. 
the multiplayer will yeah. actually change because of players' feedback. So um, I think if uh, more companies did it that way, I think more people would be happy. Yeah, but also with that in mind, don't forget that with Halo, we got a preview of the multiplayer. Yes. So it's like single player, who knows what it is. So I think that that also very much is important because with Evolve, the multiplayer is the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas here, that's a component of the game. How do you guys... And a component that will need to be tweaked based on player data, which means that the beta is very beneficial to the developers. Of course. Right. So I, I think that's also important is like, what kind of game are you? Do you have a single player and multiplayer component? And if so, I think it favors for you to showcase the multiplayer because that's something that you can benefit from having feedback on before the game comes out. Whereas the single player, I, I think still needs to be driven and by the developers because it's their kind of vision. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I think that that would be a good idea. Speaking specifically on Evolve, if they had done a tutorial of like how to shoot and fire and then just thrown you into arena, level three monster coming at the generator, you have to stop it, boom, flash the title, Evolve, would that have sold more in the same way like Dying Light, if they just did that nighttime chase, man, from what Gabe's saying, it sounds like that would have sold a, a crap ton of, of copies of that game. And can you kind of shrink down to a very specific vertical slice to really excite people without emptying you know everything that maybe i'm in the minority here and, and you guys can let me know what you think but i don't want a single player demo at all like yeah if i'm excited for a yeah. game a demo isn't going to make me more excited it's actually going to hurt the experience because i'm going to play through something and then i got to play through it again and once i have the actual game yeah i don't want a single player yeah. demo at all ever. i think pt did it right i think that's oh, yeah. how you do yeah. it i think because that's um really how you do something that is set within that game, but we don't know that that's a part of the game. We don't know. I think they've if, said it's not like the final copy. Yeah. So you see like they've, but they got you now, you know what I mean? They've the experienced about something very unique. Um, so I think that that's important, but you see, I mean, it's an issue that like we see even in the movie industry nowadays, right? Where the trailer most of the time gives away everything. Yeah, By the time yeah. you show up in the movie, you're like, Oh, I know that th he's going to turn on her or on him because the trailer right. told me it will happen. Yeah. So uh, it, it is very tricky. Uh, because you want to give something that like you know people can bite to or onto uh but at the same time you don't want to give away you know the, the like all of the steak you know you, you give them the sizzle yeah. but not the steak and i think another problem for another that... metaphor food metaphor i'm going to try to do one every week <laughs> sweet <laughs> depending on if you're you know ubisoft or if you're an indie studio you know it takes a lot of time and effort to develop a dedicated demo so giving someone just access and do a multiplayer match or an already existing level is a lot easier than the PT thing. Um, f for most studios who are in development, I don't know when Silent Hill is releasing, so, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, a different thing. But, um, you know, I, I will say, like, the Last of Us demo, well, it wasn't really a demo, but that I played at PAX, like, that's something as well, is even if they don't give us a demo for single-player games, if you're following coverage, somebody's played a demo, whether it's at a convention or at a, at a yeah, website, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you're going to get that info. It's just whether you physically are the one, you know, doing experiencing it. Uh, yeah. We had two fun uh, comments that I wanted to bring in. Um, Bob Kane said that he thinks we should do the podcast for exactly two hours and 30 minutes on Fridays and again on Saturdays for three hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> so if we want to, want to take notes down, that was his, his suggestion. Uh, thank you, us. Bob. Wait, is it, thank is you it for Bob listening Kane? to us ramble. Wait, is it Bob Kane, the comic book artist? Is the, that's the real question. Uh, I have no idea. Is His it? picture is of a bald eagle. No, hasn't Bob Kane passed away? No, I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back from the dead. Oh, jeez. And then uh, wrapping up today's show, Gustavo, Gustavo asks if Fring. he can talk to Blitzwinger. If he can talk to me? Yeah, he wants to know if he can talk to you. So I don't know if you have a special message right, for Gustavo. Yeah. Gustavo, check out my uh, brand new website, nah. www.blitzwinger.com, <laughs> no, where you can uh, leave comments, and uh, I'll reply. Here's a better one. We're going to give you, you his go. phone number right now. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no that's when we do a patreon we'll do like a like a i don't know ten thousand thing yeah, there milestone go. and we'll give out our, all of our phone numbers all right, everybody you're here to hear first if you give us ten thousand dollars we'll give you blitzwinger's phone number <laughs> hey <laughs> <laughs> i'm changing my it number it has been a very big and good show we had a uh a whole continent <laughs> drop off midway through but we managed to soldier on so thank you guys Max and Gabe for being here and staying strong the whole way through. 
Make sure, guys, to check them out um, on their YouTube channels, which I'll have links in the description below, um, and on Twitter, twitter.com slash blitzwinger, twitter.com slash volatilegabe. We're still messing around with what is going to happen um, and where this is all going to be hosted. I definitely hear you guys. I know all the requests for audio-only versions, um, and we will get that to you. Don't worry. Yeah, I, um, I, iTunes than- is coming. Like, okay. Yes, uh, last week there was a lot of people saying iTunes. iTunes is coming. Don't worry. Yeah, absolutely. And other than that, um, I think that is going to do it. Next week, like we said, Life is Strange, Dying Light. Crazy things could happen at any time. Um, and so continue we'll interacting with us, by the way, because that's the yeah. best yeah, part. Twitter, Twitter. Please leave comments, uh, thoughtful comments. We, of course, appreciate the whole idea of uh, you guys just uh, letting us know that you enjoy the conversation and you agree or disagree. Uh, but also, if you agree or disagree, provide us with a bit of feedback in terms of why so that then we could bring that into the conversation, kind of include you guys uh, through the comment section in the podcast itself. Yep. Um, and I'll, I'll be doing some more stuff, like, as far as letting you guys know how I'm putting the podcast together on Twitter. So follow me on Twitter. Like, if you guys have any suggestions for how I could put this together, other than, I mean, I can't show Nintendo footage. So um, I don't know what I'm doing this week. But if you want to see, like, behind the scenes, behind the scenes stuff for how the podcast is coming together, Twitter, Volatile Gabe. And, yeah, that's it. Yep. Before we get out of here, make sure that you go and uh, check out Gabe's Dying Light walkthrough that he has been starting on his channel. Make sure to check out Blitzwinger's new website, just blitzwinger.com, right? Yep. Lots of cool stuff going on there. And for me, I don't even know. We'll check Mario out Monday, Metroid my, Monday coming my, soon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My, my, my Nintendo love is housed at my, my channel page. And until next time, guys, girls, thank you so much for sticking with us for an extra juicy show. We'll try to get the cast and crew um, sorted out for next week so this doesn't happen again but we do appreciate your eyes and ears and comments like max said so until next time thanks again drink some hot chocolate since it was absent last week and uh, (laughs) drink drink two this time and we will see you all later